All right. Uh, what's up, guys? Welcome to part three of the Unlaced special, uh, Deciphering the Last Dance. We're at part three. We have made it to the conclusion. It's never ending, bro. I'm on part eight right now. Oh, wow. I'll see. You... Ten part series. Oh, okay. There you go. Of uh, the <laughs> Jordan documentary, uh, which was a ten point, uh, ten uh, episode series. Uh, yes, sir. We, we've gotten all the way to episode eight now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so now we are sitting on episode eight. No, we, we've been up to seven, we, and we, we started at eight to, today. Well, oh yeah, I was I was saying like we did yeah. to, today. We'll be doing eight. So we'll be doing eight through uh, ten. Mm -hmm. uh, I am your host, Chris. Uh, and then I have Gabe here while some in other the basement. Others. In the basement, still, still doing his thing. I have some yes, house again because I bought another house with all our YouTube money. Um, this is my stash house. So, yo, I don't what I'm. I'm in a stash basement. I'm in someone else's basement. I, I, I'm not getting. Clearly, I didn't sign the same contract as Chris. <laughs> they, uh, the, I got the Pippin deal. The 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 thing was you were supposed to go back after the contract negotiations, and it was mm. it was like. We like your moxie, and so then they gave me an mm. additional deal on top of the deal that we I got. I see, bro. So, I know, see. You just had to double back on them, and they would have just they they were they they, they folded. It sounds like you double backed on me, bro. So it really sounds like you dipped off. You got in the car. You just hired them out. I got I got shit to do. So I, you know, I, what do you want me to do? I, I Let us know what you guys think. <laughs> Let us know do what I, you guys do I think. Look like, do I look like? He looks like a carn artist. That's what I'm saying. Mm, do I look mm -hmm. like a carn artist? Please let people know. Uh, so we are. We didn't get a chance, but we're going to start off. Um, I, no, let me let me format how we're going to do today because it's going to be it's going to be a shorter one, but all at the same time, we're still going to try to give you guys exactly because exactly what you guys need, which is more of us. Um, so we are breaking down episode eight, nine, and ten. Um, there's going to be a shoot per episode, honestly, if you if you really look at it. Um, and oh, actually, no, forces. We 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 miss we miss two. There's, I'll I'll get to it. We're, I I want I want an actual reaction. So, These are live reactions, you guys. I don't um, know. What so we what, beforehand. So what we're going to do is we're going to break down the rest of the shoes that we have on uh, our list, and then we are going to look back at our favorite moments from the documentary. Uh, our takeaways from the documentary and then as well as you know what what was your favorite moment and then i think that would be a great point to kind of end it uh just you know our last you know, reactions on what we've seen in the documentary mm -hmm. um, but yeah so with that let's start with the jordan nine let's just start, uh jordan nine uh the retirement non-retirement slash vacation slash whatever you want to call it, however you want to uh, uh, Eight, categorize 18 it. months, bro. 18 months. Uh, Jordan decides after the three-peat, mm -hmm. the first one, that... I'm done. Good. I've, yeah. I've, I've, I've done... In his mind, he's done everything that he really... That he had to set out to do. He, yeah, he was yeah. good. And so he decides he steps away from the game. Yeah. Um, and next thing you know, he's Chicago's practice field or uh, batting. I forgot if they saw him on the practice field or the or in the batting practice cages. I cages don't. I don't or, remember. I forgot to be what, like what like I think the picture that came out first was him in the batting cages. Okay. Uh, with the white uh, with the white Sox uh, uniform on, and so Jordan decides baseball. This is his thing. Um, we've all known everybody's heard the stories like Jordan, uh, Jordan's uh, dad was uh, was into baseball and was a mm -hmm. really, uh, and that was kind of one of his sports, I would guess, in his wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. If you can, if you categorize that, and so decided he decided he was gonna play baseball. Uh, what we do see him in when he's in these batting cages are the Jordan nines. Mm -hmm. The black and whites. So the white only Air Jordan to uh, not be worn in a basketball game. True. So he um, out get, there. get that get a nice little, uh, <laughs> get a nice hot trivia. Yeah, uh, man. I I honestly did not know that. I didn't yeah. know that was that was. Uh, That's the only one that he didn't get to wear in game. I would have loved to. I would love to see some of the colorways he pull out for that. For yeah, the, like the olive nines, nines would have been nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so he steps out in the uh, Jordan nines, and 
I'll keep it there again. When this happened, I was four, five. So yeah. don't know. Uh, don't know anything about Jordan playing baseball. I just remember the jerseys that went for sale like hotcakes when I was in high school. And I don't think anyone really uh, remembers no. much about Jordan playing baseball. Uh, there Even is, if you were alive in that time, yeah. it was such a small stint. Yeah. If you if you do want to get a little background on Jordan playing baseball, uh, ESPN does have a thirty for thirty. Uh, I think it's called Riding the Bus, or the, I think it's called Riding the Bus, or something like that. It's some I don't something really with remember. bus on it. Uh, but it literally it's a documentary about Jordan playing uh, playing baseball and his ups and downs with the White Sox and being in the minor league and uh, finding out that uh, yeah you're you're a god on the court, but baseball is a whole different monster um i would definitely say check it out it is on uh espn espn mm-hmm. plus if you have the shameless uh non-sponsored plug just letting you know uh, but yeah if you want to get more like I, this goes into it uh but i like the, the 30 for 30 is like literally focused around that moment of his career so um but yeah uh Let's go ahead. Uh, any, anything else you want to plug in before we talk about our podcast, bro? Anything Chick-fil-A. else you want to? <laughs> I had Chick-fil-A today, so, yeah. Uh, shout out to Chick-fil-A. Oh, my Mine's gosh. Uh, but, right, yeah. Well, if that's Thoughts the case, on... bro, I had some homemade pupusas today. Mm, are you selling them? But, no, actually, my niece's friend is selling them, and we copped this morning and ran through them. Needless to say, we ran through them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So are you... Are we getting a link so that we can? Um, probably not. You know, probably not. I don't think they ship to Arizona, bro. I'm sorry. Damn, see, that's uh, well, I ratted him out. There it goes the 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 mansion house is in Arizona. There it is. Is somebody knocking? Is that somebody uh, knocking on the door? Is that a is that a PO, PO box address? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, 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 Jordan yeah, Nine. Yeah, can I get you uh, open thoughts on Jordan Nine? Jordan Nine, uh, Jordan Nine. I've never owned one, mm-hmm. or, or I have. Uh, I've never worn one. I guess. Um, Keep going. I feel you. I've actually the Jordan Nine was uh, most recently. Uh, Marissa and I, homegirl Marissa, we were both like, "Yo, we need to cop nines. Like that's a shoe that it's just a cool shoe, cool, cool, cool shoe to really." Um, wear up i guess i should say um you know wear up with like uh jeans and uh, and a tee or whatever or or shorts in a in a summer summer fit you know it's a really i I think it's a really versatile shoe um so i really like the shoe overall i love the colorways that it comes in Mm. um i like a lot of the colorways that that have happened since then um yeah yeah it's a dope shoe i really like it i really really do yeah, uh, same for me. I really, I really like the Jordan Nines. Um, that it's is pretty comfortable too. Yeah. Oh, uh, the 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 older retros are really yeah. comfy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so it is definitely a uh, top five shoe for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really like the Jordan Nines. Um, the black and whites are, you know, of course they're probably the most popular colorway of the Jordan Nines. Mm-hmm. Uh, the ones I have the uh, French are my favorite colorway of the mm-hmm. Jordan Nines. Like I. I and I found these on me going up to San Francisco or Oakland to visit uh, my cousin and uh, some store. I wish I knew the name so I could shop them out. Hopefully, if they were still, they're hopefully they're still in business because they were they were dope people. But it was some small store in Oakland that was in a hole in the wall and they had these for sixty. And so dude was like, oh yeah, they swooped them. Yeah, because yeah, I, I was up there and I was like, let me see if there's any stores besides Soul Supremacy because I found out that it was a lot further than I thought it was from where my cousin yeah. stayed. Yeah. And so then I found a little small store that was on Yelp and it was and they was open, so I went mm-hmm. to some small little city near Oakland and checked it out. They had some really they had some really cool deals, but the walls were bare, so it looked like they were going out of business. But um, I definitely picked I picked that up in uh, some uh, some. 11s i can't remember which 11s i got damn back, back when uh chris bought shoes yeah you know this must back be at least was, back when this was, must be at least six years ago yeah it was like <laughs> yeah, moved up to Oakland, so yeah it was, it was a while ago um but i've had those since those, that's my favorite uh colorway of the nines okay but yeah i for me nines have always been kind of like 
a go to when it comes to like a shoe that if you're if I'm if I'm talking like favorite shoes, Jordan Nines, hands down. Okay. Um, I. I don't think I have any, like, I don't have any, like, crazy memories of my night. I think that's probably the best memory I have. Um, I played basketball on them a lot when I okay. was a kid. Uh, so I, I, I can't say that. Like, when I was younger, I did a lot, play a lot of basketball on them. Not the best shoe to play basketball in, I will say. Because um, they're they're a little bit heavier than I thought they were. Like, they're, mm-hmm. they're like the 12s. Like, they're very bottom heavy. Um, pretty much all drawers are bottom heavy. But that shoe, that, the nines are definitely heavy to me. But, uh yeah that's it's not not much like not much but you know uh i guess like the only nine that i ever really tried to buy were of course the db nines yeah um i really really like those like just every the the whole the whole shoe the execution of it Mm -hmm. the colorway it's a good shoe um if i had to buy like i want i really want a pair of nines like I really do. It's on my list. Yeah. Um, if if I had to settle on one colorway, it would probably be the olive nines. Okay. Like I, I if I'm gonna go after one, it's gonna be that. Unless like something else comes up and it's like a, cheaper or whatever, or yeah. it's like a it's like way less. And of course, I'm always down for it. Yeah. Um, but an olive nine, I would really appreciate it right now. Yeah. Um, I w- I'm a big fan of the low nines as well. Okay. That's nines. Nine. Like, there's a couple other uh, shoes that have lows that I'm. Uh, I'm also a fan of. But the nine lows, I'm also like really like into like the lows for the mm-hmm. nines, the low sixes. Um, I really like the low sixes and the, like the low thirteens, the low twelves. Okay. Like, those are like really dope. Uh, I, those are really dope. Like that where they have a low model that's also really uh good. I have. Um, I can't, I don't know the name of them. I can't remember. Right. What am I using as a stand today? the oh we're using ones yeah well i i grabbed these because because um i have a pair of sixes that i really wanted to use actually uh but they're all they're all the way at the bottom of my stack oh yeah and these shoes don't have a box so they're literally the when you open my closet they're the first shoe that's there oh okay so i just pulled one and i was like whatever man (laughs) yeah um no, yeah, uh, I can't remember. The co- it's the uh, it's the one. I think I showed them to you. The the lows, the white with the uh, with the uh, with the the royal blue or like navy blue. Uh, oh, the the nine lows. They look just like that. Yeah. I yeah, mean, but, obviously, they look just well, yeah, like that. Well, yeah, but like it's the navy now. blue around here. So yeah, like, yeah. I have those, but they're so separate. Um, so I I'm trying to find a way to get those restored so I can be able to wear them. Yeah. Um, so they're literally just sitting in the trunk, like just. Well, they're gonna get worse in the trunk, bro. I, no, well, they were in the trunk. So that's what happened. <laughs> this is what happened. Come they, on, man. They when I took my when I took my Elevens to you, I put them in the uh-huh. trunk. Uh-huh. And so I was like, I was like, okay, well, Gabe, no, like I was because I didn't know if you were going, like if you do an extra little. Uh, I'm definitely little, not gonna go into little, uh, into tools doing in soul, your bag, bro. you know. <laughs> so and then I took them out. Yeah. And then I uh, came back down to Pasadena. My whole thing was supposed to be I was gonna uh, hopefully drop them off with somebody that could do them. The uh, there's a restoration company that's in Pasadena that's that does stuff too. Oh really? Yeah, they. But I don't I, know I, that. I don't know if they do. Uh, they uh, they do separated souls. Most most shoe places like that, um, they'll do almost any shoe, bro. Yeah, and so I was hoping that they would do them. They don't. So. Oh, well. You know, so did you uppercut them? Hmm? Did you uppercut them? No. Nah. Give them a bad review? No, nah. I could, I, I couldn't. You know, I, they're, they're. they're no, nah, I wouldn't either. I'm just, just yeah. curious. You know, I will give them bad review so that we can, so you can get better business. Well, I mean, I, I just shipped out it's, shoes. He actually shipped them back to me this morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, I shipped them out to this guy in uh, Richmond, Virginia. Okay. Um. Yeah, I look. He looked like. I mean, I like the work. I've been following him for a while now, like a little, like maybe six months or so. Yeah. Um, and he his turnaround was uh, a week. He got my shoes on Monday and he shipped them out Friday. Oh, that's good. Or today, yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. I right, check that out. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Oh, you're um struggling over there. Well, I'll let you know when they come in. So what oh, they yeah, look please. like. Yeah, I want to see what they look like. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. So for me. 
nines, I think they're self-explanatory. Um, mm-hmm. I think the Jordan uh, joining the White Sox is probably the biggest moment in the nines. Uh, mm-hmm. I can't think off the top of or, my head. I'm pretty sure there's... <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, he yeah. Does wear them. yeah. Yeah, he wears yeah, them yeah, in okay. the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, and then uh, he got they have them on the. Uh, have them on the those are those are the shoes. Yeah, they, they steal those shoes. Yeah, when uh, yeah. Daffy Duck is yeah. like, all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah. Okay. When they go um, into the house and then they run into the dog. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, I can't believe I forgot about that. I think I'm trying to like remember so much. Like I'm trying to remember so many isolated things. That I can't. I'm that guy. I'm telling you, just you keep random random facts that are in here, bro. You just... Keep me on track. That's all I need. You know? Weird ones, bro. You are the you are the ketchup to my mustard. Oh, I care about you. I can't. I can't. I can't express. You know, love. You know, somebody. Somebody. We gonna, gonna get some views on this one it's for Friday. sure. Let me, let me <laughs> express my love. We, go, we gonna get some nice uh, hashtags out of this one. <laughs> <laughs> Power yeah, couple. <laughs> it is. Well, <laughs> power couple. Um, Thank you. But yeah, so um, I guess uh, better yet, let's leave it at that. Um, instead of talking in circles, what do you rank? Favorite on? uh nine, bro. I think I have nine at nine. Yeah, you have a lot of shoes in their own. It's respective because I'm very, and I and I'm realizing this, and I hope that you know our listeners don't think that I'm super like I'm tracking it down. Mm. Uh, I'm super like to the book or whatever yeah. um, but t- to be honest like one through s- seven mm. those have the major mix up um, like one is a little down here five obviously jumps from five to one Yeah, and then all of that in between but after eight like I really 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 like them don't get me wrong nine I like Mm-hmm. 10 i like 11 i like 11 i would be the only one that i might put like at nine yeah but everything else kind of just falls in place okay uh, they're good me, they're hot don't get me wrong I, I mean it's not like it's not that i don't like it it's, it's just they're they're they fit right where they're at they're just, exactly i mean right in- i might uh i may change eight or nine you mm-hmm. know depending because okay. because eight is like a really heavy shoe really mm-hmm. Uh, detail oriented and then you have the nine which is a very minimal shoe yeah so it's, the, the yeah. most details on the on the sole of the shoe yeah so. exactly um Where do you i would have nine say at? i would say uh my nines i would have at three yeah at three huh yeah all right um i the nines are definitely my one of my top jordans um just just because i Oh, what happened? Why am I getting? I'm getting bam- um, bombarded. No, remind me later, please. Okay, sorry. Um, I'll be, uh, Jordan nines. Just they always look good to me. Like I can never really go wrong with the Jordan, and especially the only issue I have with the Jordan nines is the colorways, uh-huh. which you know we'll we'll get to just in a second. But like the colorways. They don't really like. There's not many that you can st- like. You can uh, look at and be like, "That was a great, like that, like that." They'll those are great colorways. They don't have like moments. It's usually the ones that have everybody knows of already. There's nothing new that comes out where you're like, "Oh yeah, okay, that's that could be something that makes this shoe desirable." They don't. They don't do it, or they just they refuse to. I should say because they did. They had a moment. What back in. Uh, what year did the uh was it the crawfish drop? Oh yeah, when they dropped like six of those colorways. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the motorboat motorboat yeah. Jones, Crawfish. So um like, that that yeah, was probably joints. Like, that was probably the only time that they really tried. The Jordan nine had its thing. Yeah, and they and it just it to me as like somebody that is really into uh nines were it failed to me. Like a lot of okay. people got them, they did sell out um, everywhere, all that stuff. But I think at that time, everything Jordan was selling out at that time. And not- but what if there wasn't an intent though? How did I mean? It only failed if you view it as it trying to accomplish something that you're manifesting on your own. You know what I mean? Well, I think, but I think that's. I think that's. I, I thought it was a success. I I. Well, I, I think- wouldn't call it a failure at all. I mean, to release so many nines in a time where nines weren't being released for all of them to sell out but i think for i for
from my what well, again all the only my only like uh opinion on this is based off of my own like yeah stores them so like there are there are a lot of people i see that still rock the crawfish i still see those you know randomly mm-hmm. yeah. um, being worn by people but for me i looked as they're introducing new colorways for a shoe that rarely had any like notable colorways like mm-hmm. the, the cool grays the mm-hmm. The, uh, the black and whites, um, the flints, all that stuff. And then you kind of just don't see anything. The, uh, the citrus ones, the black with the, the citrus on the inside. Uh, like they're all I don't black. really remember other than the two most well-known ones. Yeah. What are the other ones? Uh, some, oh, I don't even remember, man. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. I give up. Yeah, they they like they had they had some, but it was like I felt like in that moment there was a lot that just kind of was like, eh, they it just didn't for me it didn't make me feel like they tried. They just kind of went and said, yeah, here's here's different colors that we thought we could put together, and hopefully you guys like it. Yeah, it sold out, but I don't think for me personally that it did what it was supposed to do. Whereas, but again, I hold the nine to a lot higher standard than. And these motorboat Jones are fire. You like the Marlboro Jones? Uh, bro, I'm a fan of any, almost all, all red Jordans. I don't think all red Jordans really are ever done wrong. Mm. I mean, you really okay. can't. Literally, like, the 21s, hot hot fire, the, like, the first all red Air Jordan. Yeah. Uh, Toros, um, Toro 5s, Toro 4s, uh, the other uh, all red 5s. Not as good, but I'd still rock them. Mm. Um, Motorboat Jones, uh, the Ferrari 14s, oh, wow. um, the new 14s that are came, coming out, the red ones. Yeah. Uh, the the sixes have like three different all red versions, and I and I have two out of the three. Mm. Um, how many all red? the nines? Obviously. Uh, into what the uh, what is it? Those 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 are probably my least favorite low key. <laughs> the elevens. Yeah. What is, what is that? The those were the seventy two. Yeah, I, yeah, you know, seventy two tens were the black ones that look oh, like the, the bread. Those the red ones. I win like ninety six, I think. Yeah, win like ninety six. Oh, uh, okay. I think it is. Let me let me look it up. Yeah, it is. Went like ninety six. Okay. They kept they 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 kept dropping a bunch of shoes. I had to, for the same. Yeah, went like nine. Went like eighty two. I think it was the other one or eighty three or something like that. And then went like yeah, but um, yeah, bro. Uh, the ones have a bunch of all red kicks. Uh, the twelves. The twelves are. Yeah, that, uh, right. I think I think uh, the reason why I don't like them is because they they seemed a bit ashy. They are. Yeah, yeah, they, they seemed are. a bit ashy. Like I, I was like, oh, I'm good. I feel like um, I, I think that was just kind of like a heave. Like they were just mm-hmm. doing a hell mary with that one. Here you go, guys. Well, they I think it's because they also had the blue one, and then they kind of just red and blue. They almost always do it, you know. <laughs> it's like it's like tell us more that you don't care and that you're just you're just putting colors out now. <laughs> It's pretty much. I mean, we're gonna buy them. Well, I didn't. Well, we as a as a community. Oh, as a, as a community. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. My uh, Mike has them. He would. He wears, There you go. He wears the fuck out of them too. Well, so, Mike does look like a all uh, like a ashy twelve wearing person. Damn. Like like not like not like him him but. <laughs> Mike, hey, next time you see him, fuck him up. Hey, do what you gotta do. Oh, dude, do. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you like this, Mike. Oh my god! I'm just, I'm just oh. letting you know. He's Gabe is gonna be around. Oh man! Do what you gotta do? That's Handle your business. <laughs> Handle your business. I'm just. Oh, you, dude! You just you for no oh. reason, no reason at all. No reason at all. That's not that totally didn't come out the way I tried. Yeah, yeah Mike, Mike. I mean, there's no one back. Just, just Mike, take it as wor- like just take it as he said the worst thing ever. Yeah, do what you what want. Are, that. Look, man. Okay. Whatever. Let's get let's get off of Ashy Twelves. 
<laughs> well, actually, no. <laughs> well, no, no, no. What's your uh? What you did you already say? What your favorite colorway is for the nine? Olives. Olives. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I already, already showed mine. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so then let's actually stay on twelves, but not actually twelves. We make our way to the infamous flu game. Bum, bum, bum. The flu game out here. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you want to start this off? Uh, How so? Uh, do we want to talk about the actual game? Because, again, I, like, I don't want people to think that we're going to do a deep dive on these games because, again, I don't know. I was not old enough to watch these games or yeah. to understand them, I should say. Yeah. But every like everybody knows the infamous picture of Scotty Pippen holding uh MJ. Or help helping MJ off the court yeah. after uh he scores 32 36 I don't remember uh, it, was, it was he 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 the game was for him to to be as on as he was for that game it was crazy still you know he was he, he was a he was a walking 40 piece I, I said this one mm-hmm. previous episode he's a walking 40 piece mm-hmm. um he goes in um and everybody, oh, he has the flu. Um, before this document came out, a lot of people said it was food poisoning. Mm-hmm. A lot of people had speculation that it was, uh, it was uh, food poisoning. He didn't have the flu, or that he was hungover, or well, either way, he lit him up, bro. Yeah, he, every, there was there was a million different stories on why. Whatever, he yeah, whatever it was, the weather. He torched uh, him, but he still go out. He still went out there and. Uh, and uh, gave him buckets, but the game itself is memorable. But also, what came with that was the Jordan Twelves that he mm-hmm. was wearing that for that game, mm-hmm. and he was they were the black and red Twelves. Uh, mm-hmm. um, they got how many? There's two tech, two technically releases for that. There's the o- there's the OG. OG. And the then, first retro. When did and they then, do the new book, uh, Flu Game? The Flu Game? I think they were in high one? school, bro. Yeah, that was the third one. That was the third one, right? And then they had, yeah. they had the little... Uh, the little With the little face sick, on it. Sick face yeah. on, the, on the tongue. Yeah. And then they they did it one more time, right? Or am I tripping? I don't know how many red 12 retros there are. Let me check. I could have swore there was two, three. I think, I I think there they was... did one more after the Flu Game. After the the... Named flu game twelve, the new book one. Mm, yeah, they did. It's in twenty sixteen. Okay, yeah, I know I was a tripper. Um, and so that that shoe, you know, of course, writes it uh, was has written its own history. Yeah, Brad twelves are f- hot fire, bro. Yeah, they're they're a great looking shoe. Um, oh man, that that shoe in its own name, everybody calls it the flu game twelves. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. No matter what, there are a lot of people that change it up and you know say, "Oh, it's food poisoning," or they just call it the twelves, or the, the poison flus, the poison flus. <laughs> but um, I would say, what's your first thoughts on the on on the flu games, just as a whole? I would say, take them like take all of them into account. There, there are aspects of the flu game, the actual flu game retro. Yeah. For for all intensive educational purposes, we will be uh, differentiating bread twelve and flu game twelve. Yeah. All right, you guys, our listeners. <laughs> so uh, obviously, I like the the bread twelve more. Yeah. But there are aspects of the the flu game that I do like. Um, the suede new bug initially kind of was like a bad idea. But it's not too bad if it's a clean pair. It's it's yeah. a it's a nice uh, alternative. Um, I do like the little addition of the of the 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 emoji. faces on the side. Yeah, the face on the side and on the tongue. Yeah. I guess it is an emoji in a sense. Yeah. You know? um, Emojis. Um, just overall, sure, I like it. I, I I like them for what they are separately. Yeah. Um, but I don't like that. Since the flu game twelve, everyone refers to the black and red twelve as the flu game. Game twelve, yeah. Think, that's what I don't like. I I think that's a lot of people's the easiest way for people to decide because if you do like for like a lot like in a lot of people like even if you 
like for somebody like you or mm-hmm. um like I know I have a bad habit of it. So like if somebody says like oh the flu game trolls, I'll I still think of the the emoji one, not mm-hmm. the not the black and red uh one. So I like the OGs or even just the uh the leather ones, I always assume that they're talking about the actual blue Yeah, one I mean why why would it. you and so assume but, differently? But I think a lot of people they just fall under that of just that's what they believe. Like they think when you say flu game, they don't. I, don't, I think a lot, of, and I think a lot of people assume you're talking about the the OG. Yeah, the retro. I don't think a lot of people like a lot because I completely forgot when that when that shoe dropped. I remember I got it, and mm-hmm. I remember I wore that shoe like crazy. But I forgot so at one point about that shoe. So I think a lot of people always just skip over that one. Fuck on my think, face. And think about uh, the 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 other retros that came with it instead of just thinking about the the new black one. So, but I, I get like I get what you're saying because a lot because a lot of people will automatically just say, "Oh, the one with the emoji on the tongue and everything like that." I'm over here going through colorways, <laughs> see which one I like. Um, but yeah, so for me, uh, I I re- I remember I never had the 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 retro. Uh, leather ones i always had the i bought the flu game ones so the suede new buck mm-hmm. i wore that shoe a lot until it, they creased too much and then i just started wearing them for basketball mm-hmm. and then at a certain point they just got really ashy to the point where there was no return for them and so at that point i never had them again mm-hmm. but that 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 shoe i've always wanted the the retro black and red and just just to the, have the actual breads, the actual breads one, yeah. I w- always wanted a pair. Um, you look like an obsidian 12s person. I had those two, yeah. That looks obsidian looks like it's your color, like yeah. uh, in most Jordans that offer that colorway, yeah. I, my, my, um, my, uh, oh, actually, I can show you, I can show you guys, but um, the. The twelve alone. So I, I, I think we should kind of just jump into like just the twelve as a as a whole. The yeah. twelve alone for me is a really uh, dope shoe. Mm-hmm. Uh, I play back. The twelve is probably the one shoe I play basketball on the most. Mm-hmm. Uh, besides the twenty nine, like the twenty nine, of course, like that that was a great uh, shoe. But either way, uh, the twelve has probably got the second most wear playing basketball. Um, I have countless amount of colorways for the for the 12s mm-hmm. i have the taxis i have the french blues i have the uh the the black and uh baby blue carolina uh new buck 12 oh the um fuck what's the nickname on those i don't even, i didn't know they had a nickname yeah they do i was literally just thinking about it because those are the only 12s i actually ever really owned oh for real yeah the i guess they're just called new bucks yeah yeah um yeah. Uh, I've had the 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 um yeah, those are playoff, fire the playoff twelves like there there's I have actually, thank I have you y'all hear the corn man yeah that thank is, you uh, elote uh, elote elote yeah elote um I had the playoff twelves I have the playoff twelves oh nice They're, thank you my mom going out there right now supporting I'm, local uh, small business. <laughs> <laughs> small business small business friday hey um, man but yeah so like i think that shoe alone is a you know top shoe for me mm-hmm. um what 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 is the color what's the color for you uh i'll show you give me a second See, i should have i should have pulled this out because i completely forgot well, i forgot i had it in here but a cut in and out right here Let's so see what favorite, it is. Favorite, uh, it's gonna be those ugly black and orange 12s. Black and orange. Yeah, there isn't a black and orange 12, but I don't know. My favorite colorway of the 12s. Uh, oh, okay. Is your tab cracked? Huh? Is your tab cracked on the outside? Oh, shit, it is. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Whoa. Yo, why is it so? Oh damn! <laughs> what happened? That's the uh, that's uh the uh the biggest flaw of the Jordan Twelves. So if uh if anybody see uh on it's all cracked right here. Mm-hmm. Damn, it's ugly. Um, 
Love the shoe, but the, genuine reactions, guys. Genuine love reactions. Shoe. Love the shoe. This is not the uh, was it when did this release 2018? The last one released in 2018. Oh, they did retro that shoe, yeah. Yeah, this is the uh, 03. Was it 03? 03? Look at your tongue, bro. I think it was 03. The production is all, all up in that hoe. All right, guys, live, live, live lessons of Chris trying to read. Why? Here we go. Shut up. Here we go. Chris is Chris was that kid in elementary yeah, where it was more of a popcorn yeah. reading. <laughs> I, I was a killer at popcorn reading. <laughs> people people used to hate calling on me on popcorn reading because I used to always oh read too my much. gosh I used to read past my thing because I always wanted because they would always call like some <laughs> dude that couldn't read and then I would have to like. You, have to you'd, be, to... you'd be the kid that stepped in when the whole class is quiet. Yeah, like all right, yeah. let me let, yeah. let me let, let, let me get us body, through this paragraph. Let me, let me body this real quick. Y'all hey, that, hey I tried that's how I tried to like set off my skills against the girls. Like, you know, like it'd be the one dude that was considered cool and then he's stumbling on on like on a on a four syllable word yeah. and I come in and just yeah, so can I finish uh, the paragraph, uh, yeah. Miss? It's like, yeah, hey, that, go ahead, Chris. That, that word is photosynthesis. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. then I, you know, then I come in. It never impressed him, but you know, I, I definitely tried. I definitely here tried. we are. Um, yeah, here we are talking on the podcast. <laughs> here we are talking about shoes. It, um, it didn't work for you, bro. It did. It did. It did. <laughs> I'm, I'm single, alone, <laughs> with only in, my shoes. So like, in his PO box address. <laughs> hiding out mm -hmm. um but yeah so uh french blues are my favorite uh um, yeah 12 um funny story about this i bought these uh back in i want to say 2012 mm -hmm. 2011 mm -hmm. and got them for a great price i'm surprised i got them for a great price on ebay and then uh the guy the guy was like yeah like uh uh Grace Shoe kept, you know, I've only tried it on a couple of times. Uh, I wore it once and I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, it's no problem. Like, I'm not like big, like, I'm not going to kill you for like wearing shoes. Like, I, I kind of mm -hmm. helps with the price all the time. And so then I get it, finally get it home. I'm happy because I'm like, oh, I get to finally, like, this is one of the shoes I always wanted as a kid. Like, I yeah. always wanted this shoe. And I finally was able to get it. And like, as you could tell, like, it's in great condition, like, just great condition yeah. to be able to. And go do my errands in them. Like, I'm like, oh, I feel like, you know, when you like feel good, like I, I just felt great in the shoe. Get home and I'm like, yo, why does it feel like I'm like, like, it felt like I was stepping in gum for uh -huh. a second. I'm like, why is it like, why does it like feel like I'm dragging a little bit? Look down, uh, right shoe has already separated on the front. And I'm like, there was that. And so that was- Hit, that hit was the weights, good. Chris. You clearly you're too heavy for your shoes. Right? And so that was the end of, that was the end of, that Those. 12 mm -hmm. um again so i want you guys to understand something so a lot of the shoes i have need to be re uh re-glued i'm telling you fam a lot of them like a lot of like shit that people really like like color wise like colors uh, way wise that would like really be like oh those shits are hard they need to be re-glued because i had i was a like i'm big on getting shoes that i wanted when i was a kid mm -hmm. so thinking about when I was a kid, I was in like middle, like thinking like the early 2000s. A lot of those shoes are separating now, regardless mm -hmm. of you know anything. Like it's just, I mean, it's what it uh, OG Yeezys are right there right now. They're separating left oh, and right. Yeah. 2007. 2007? That's an error. 2000, no, 10? I don't know, man, but they're, there's, <laughs> oh shit. I broke that? this over here. Oh, I thought that was a coffin baby. Like, yo. We got we got new guests. No, nah, it's a, it's a flower pot. I almost knocked it over. No, nah, but yeah, like I, like most of my like most of the shoes I want to wear are are separating. So I need like I need them to be re glued. Like it just has mm -hmm. to happen for me to wear them. And the the like my twelves are like my first like the first shoe I want to be done because I really want to wear them because, but minus the separation, they're in tip top condition. Like and that's probably the sad part like i can't even show them off like the way i want to because they're in mm. bad condition mm. but i might have to find another pair now that the uh the the tag is uh cracked so yeah this dude came over here it's really supporting the small business Are you, she did, came through with three corns raspado, uh some doritos 
Did you I don't know. That? I'm a little scared to ask if one of them is from me or not. Mm. We'll find out off air, bro. We'll find out <laughs> in the next episode yeah. of Dragon Ball Z. Um, no, but yeah, so that's my favorite colorway. Um, hands down. There's not uh, one that's even close to it. What about you? Yeah, did y'all hear this, dude? Did she say no? No, did y'all hear this, dude? Nah. Uh, show you her burping? Oh, I thought that was a no. <laughs> no. Um, but my favorite Jordan 12 colorway, it would have to be probably the bread or the playoff. Okay. One of those two. I'm going to go with bread. Bread 12s. Red 12s. Red 12s, it's just when I envision them, uh, the only image I ever really have is Jordan in the all red uni mm-hmm. with the 12s on. Like, okay. it's just, it's such a, it's such a look, bro. Like, yeah. just that, yeah, it was just, it's a fire fit. Yeah. <laughs> fire fit. Yeah, like, it's I'm just. Kill, I'm about to kill him in this. Yeah, I'm about to kill him with an entire Chicago Bulls yeah. uni real quick. Yeah. Like, <laughs> how, do, uh, how do you feel about the, uh, the cherry 12s? Um, I like them, but not as much as Brad's. But I, I, I forget about that colorway. You do? Um, I mean, That's not second. that I forget about it. Um, but I, I'm, it's not my top three. I don't think so. Okay. No. Okay. Uh, Brad playoff. And I don't know, man. There's so many 12s colorways. Yeah. There's just so many. Which is, which shows like the night and day from the, like, mm-hmm. And not like because it's, it's you, we totally skip over the 10, but like shows nine day from like the nines and the 12s of like the nines they tried and they pretty like the amount of hits that you got with the 12s compared to like the amount of hits you got, even with the 10s. Like, even if you look back at the 10s, and well, the, the 10 had the entire city series when it came out, yeah, like so many color words for the 10s, um, but for the lot- steel grays. Shadows. I forget about a lot of those. That like that's the crazy thing. Like, I forget a lot about a lot of the the tens that dropped, like colorway wise. Bro, I love the tens. Um, the original uh gray and fi- and gray and red ones. Mm. Um, the the entire city series. Um, shadows. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah, it was quite a bit. It was quite yeah. a bit, man. But yeah, so where do the twelves rank on your on your list? Um, I might put twelve at ten, dude. Okay. I might edge out the actual Air Jordan ten. Okay. For that one. Hmm. I mean, I love the tens, dude. But I guess it's, I guess if I'm really placing it somewhere, I think I like the twelve more than the ten. Yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna leave it at ten. Okay. I I would I have the twelves uh, uh, surprisingly at one for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, okay. Uh, the twelves for me are. Let me uh, see this. The twelves for me are definitely a. Uh, oh no! Sorry! No! 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 Whoops! Okay, I misplaced some. I'm, I misplaced some shoes. Okay. Um, damn. See, this makes my top ten hard now. Actually, so where is it at? Some somebody's gonna have to get bumped, and the one has to get bumped again. Are you kidding me, dude? You already have it at nine. The one has to get bumped to what ten? So I'm gonna put the. I'm gonna put. What do I have at five? I had the. You have the threes at five. Uh, threes at five. Put the threes at nine. Ones the are at fuck? ten, and we're putting the twelves at three, or at uh at uh at five at five. Yeah. Okay. The twelves are definitely a top five. Shoe the for Jordan me. three just dropped four spaces on his yeah. list. I'm sorry. I I apologize. Like the like I looking at both shoes I. Again, I said that this, you know, this uh, this list is gonna change dramatically because mm-hmm. we had because a lot of my favorite shoes are in this episode. So, as you can see, based off of where they're being placed, but yeah, the Jordan uh, the Jordan Twelves are definitely a top five. Uh, okay. Uh, French blue is definitely my favorite colorway. Cherry 
12s are my second favorite. Um, yeah. I think that's, yeah. All right. That's, my my best memories are just me trying to always own the French Bulls, and I got that chance. But now I can't even wear them. And they've just been sitting. Well, years. you got to, you know, make some moves at some point. You got to yeah, make right? the move to fix it. It's not going to fix itself. I know, but, like, it, it's – like, because you know what it is? It's hard finding people that are – willing to do it or even have that in their wheelhouse there's and, tons of people that are willing to do it bro you just got it's not it's not about every, every, finding it's about being comfortable with every part like they're like and you have you don't introduce me to your plugs you well you I, never asked me like this i bro. ask you all the time like yo because i try because i'm trying to support small business this is the first time i've messed with or message this guy and sent him any work. This is literally no, week one. I'm saying, but I'm saying about you. you I didn't have I, one I'm, before. But if I'm no, I'm saying if I come to you and say, yo, if you're gonna work, you're working on my 11s. Yo, when are you gonna start? When are you? I'm not doing that, fam. I'm and never gonna do so it. So if I'm gonna ask you that, that means, oh, yo, I got this guy that might be able to do it. If you're willing never to, gonna do it. You know, just so you know, you can be taken care of. If I come to you and ask you, then at least that still be like, well, I'm not gonna do it ever. But I know a guy that will do it. Here you go. Because all the people I get introduced with always either are charging fucking seven thousand dollars to get it done, or they're always like, "Yo, I, my my schedule's too backed up. I can't even do it. I don't know. I don't know when I'll get to it." And it's like, I don't want to hear that. Like, especially a potential customer, I don't want to hear guy's that. Guys lying, lying every time, every time. Liar. Every. All time. right, bro. Let's move on to the next shoe, bro. I'm. Next can, shoe. Where are the fun shoes at? The fun shoes. Are All we right. past the fun ones? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, so then, well, I, I guess the last one would be a, a fun shoe. But uh, so we we're gonna we're gonna quickly go through. Uh, we're not gonna really talk much about the ten because we talked about it a little bit. But how do you feel about the tens? Um, I like the tens because they have a story. I guess. Mm-hmm. So when it first released, they had the they had stitching that went across the tongue. God damn, I got all these cables. So they had like stitching up here. Mm-hmm. I mean, not the tongue, the toe box. Mm-hmm. So if you look at the original tens, there's this a line right here, and Jordan was like, well, "What the fuck is that? Like, why is there a line that just goes across the toe box?" Mm-hmm. So then they had to recall the tens, and then they put them out without the without the without the stitched line. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a cool little story. Okay. Um, so you can still cop those. You, they'll they'll come up every now and again. Yeah. Um, the 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 stitched toe box tens. Uh, structurally, it's a comfortable shoe. It's it's pretty. There's nothing much to it. Yeah. Um, one of the early uh, retro or the early samples for the tens were the seamless tens, mm-hmm. where they it was literally just a leather upper. Mm-hmm. There's nothing nothing at all else to it. Um, it looked like just a sheet of paper, basically. Yeah. Um, I thought those were ugly, but uh, growing up, those had a lot of hype. It was like a unicorn almost. Uh, there's even a lasered pair for Jordan's birthday. Um, I just read about shoes that we'll probably never see. Yeah. <laughs> um, but overall, the best thing. yeah. That's overall, the best I like thing. the shoe. Um, I do think that they crease ugly. Yes. Like some shoes, creasing is nice, and obviously, creasing you can't work around. Yeah. But those tens crease pretty ugly. <laughs> like it, it's like the whole shoe just gets creased because it's it's like a one piece shoe. It's, yeah, it's one. It's one. Yeah, yeah it's, it's just yeah, piece, it's, yeah. It's a weird. It's a weird built shoe, and it doesn't age well, I guess. Yeah, uh, I think the only way to connect this really right now. Um, that you guys can see in the documentary. There's a couple games that you, uh, I mean, there's a couple clips that you see, uh, the tens, uh, probably the most notable, especially, and you see it in the trailer as well. Um, when they do the trailers, uh, Scotty Pippen, you know, show, uh, showing the, the camera, his tens. Like, oh yeah. And telling Jordan to come back. This one Those souls are so fire. I love that soul. Mm-hmm. I love that soul. That's a, that's a great soul. And so he's like, he has this, he has a soul to the camera and he's, you know, telling Jordan to come back. Um, uh, 
if people Maybe know come about, back. people know about the soul um it has mm-hmm. the years that uh, mm-hmm. it has the has all his accolades on the uh on the on the on the bottom so like they're little colored they're like they're, t- they're all like colored panel little slits and they accolades have, man they have the years on there as well the years of like scoring titles mvp, MVP years championship yes, years yes. yeah and so all defensive and all that good stuff and so you see all you see that's that's probably the one notable clip uh there are a couple in there if i'm not mistaken that you see it in um but i i, I just wanted to touch that because we were going through our top one through 14 and so mm-hmm. you have to be able to know where we put well we, well if before we finished off there's one that we didn't really touch at the beginning uh what the, the twos Mm, well, the, that too. But um, this. Well, I don't. I, I know it's on your list. I know we're gonna touch it, but I don't know if it's the next year or the last year. I know we have two left. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, you want to? You just want to jump to that? I mean, I. Uh, I don't know, bro. I don't know. You tell us. Uh, do you, where do you, where do you put your where do you put the tens? Uh. I'm gonna bump them down to uh to twelve. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna bump them down to twelve. Okay. Uh I have them at fourteen for me. Mm-hmm. Uh I was never a big fan of the tens. Uh I really like the backwards jump, man. Yeah. On the left shoe? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the left shoe. I really, really like that. It, it's just, it's just, I don't know. It's different, especially for that time. Like thinking about every shoe or every shoe early on um, had an emphasis on including that Nike Air somewhere. Uh, and the Jordan Ten is not that. Yeah, it, it has just his branding. So on the back, for one to be normal and the other one to be reverse mm-hmm. or flip, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. Um. I think my favorite colorway that I or the Seattle tins. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's probably my favorite one. Mm-hmm. Um, out of all, I don't really have. I like. I had a pair of tins. Um, I've had actually a couple, but they're not like my favorite. Um, I like them. For, like I like wearing them with shorts. Like I'm pretty sure that's probably the only time mm-hmm. I wear them. Anytime, mm-hmm. anytime else. Uh, but the Seattle tins are probably my favorite colorway out of all of them. All um, right. One day, I'll probably. Well, you had the retro this past year. You yeah. that that's there. You go. But again, I still I'm still not sold on them. Like that was the thing. Like I'm not a big ten fan. So even though I like the colorway, I wasn't probably gonna get them regardless. Right now, I'm currently on the hunt for OG shadows. Okay. Um, I there was a pair on offer up, and the guy wanted like he had them up for like two twenty, and then he went all the way down to like a hundred and forty, I think. Mm-hmm. And then I offered him eighty bucks, <laughs> and he said no. And so I think someone else bought them because, uh, like two weeks later, someone else was also selling an OG pair of tens, but they had sole separation. Mm-hmm. So I think someone bought that guy's pair, wore them, they separated, and then he tried to sell he tried, them. He tried to try to uh, hurry up and try to get it back on the. So I guess that that would have been me. I'm glad I didn't buy them, but yeah. I mean, it's unavoidable. You never know what pair will be the pair that separates. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I think like we get to that time, like a lot of the shoes that we that we we want mm-hmm. from childhood, regardless of what that may be, we have to accept that we're gonna have some separation at a certain point. And a lot, but I've seen a lot of people have like started like getting ahead of it, or they just were before they even like they they're not even taking a risk they just automatically uh they just, just buy the shoe and they fix it right away immediately like before they even that, that's that's i'm trying to do that right now with the uh with the pair of og ones actually mm. uh, yeah i want to i want to land a, a really beat pair because they look so good bro when they're hella worn like that yeah I want to buy a really beat pair and just uh, swap out the sole and that's it and rock it. Okay. Well, good luck. Hey, man. Good I'm uh, currently watching a few, you know, so hopefully I don't forget these bids. How, are, they, are there any of them done today? 
No, nah, they're uh, one of them is done tomorrow, and then the other one is done on Sunday. Mm. But the one that's done on Sunday is already up to four hundred dollars. So I think I'm gonna let that one go. <laughs> just, I, yeah, y'all got, but, it. Y'all got yeah, it. Yeah, 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 y'all got it. The other one is at a hundred bucks. So hopefully, the one that ends tomorrow is at one hundred and twenty. So hopefully, I can, oh, well. I can, I can get that one for under two hundred. Yeah. And that's a steal, in my opinion. Okay. I mean, two hundred dollars for a hella worn thirty old pair of shoes. Whoever's selling is coming up regardless, bro. Yeah. yeah. Like that. That's not. That's a return that I shit a b- we'll, business return. I'd I'd make. <laughs> we'll we'll see the uh we'll the end results. Knock on wood and see see the results that you make out of. Hopefully, it. bro. Hopefully. I mean, I'm not gonna do the work. I'm just gonna do the the cleaning of. And you're gonna sell yeah. them out. Yeah, and I'm gonna sell them out. Same dude. Probably low key. I'm gonna ask him if he can do them. Mm. Um, I would assume so, but I think Jordan ones require stitching. Can we? Can we? Uh, can we? Can we? Uh, can we find some room for my twelves to go in that box as well? All right, guys. This concludes part mm. three of uh, the. <laughs> yeah. yeah, bro. I'm. I'm gonna keep the box that he's shipping my shoes back in actually, because I sent him two, so it should be a pretty big box. Yeah, you keep. You always. We always post like, yeah, we're using the boxes. <laughs> well, I for... just, dude. Last week I threw out like fifty boxes, dog. Like it was crazy. I had so many boxes here. Jeez. Yeah, because you're spending so much money. Hey, man. Stop spending Duh. all the podcast cash. Oh, well, sorry. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want us coming in here asking for donations after a certain point. We hey, do. bro. We, there's going to be a GoFundMe. But just, if you guys do want to help the show out, we are yeah, just, accepting it. Yeah, put, on your, put the just, cash apps down there, bro. Yeah. Put the cash apps it is gonna be our personal cash on even a podcast. Yes, yeah, exactly. Thank you, thank you guys. This is helping us as we eat, you know, we eat steak on the podcast after a while. Like, yeah, thank True. you guys. I'm Thanks. gonna do a podcast from the pool. True. With <laughs> um, the PO with the PO box address in the background. <laughs> um, <laughs> just send us stuff here. <laughs> just just send everything here. We're good. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, so uh ten, you said you have it at twelve? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Twelve. Uh, I have it at fourteen. Um, did you 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 said OG Shadow colorway? Yeah, o- Shadows in general, are my favorite. Yeah, oh, in general. Okay. Um, so that moves us on to our next uh, shoe, the Jordan Six. Yes, I can Let's say. Let's fucking go. My personal favorite shoe. So you already know where this is going. Number one. Obviously, Jeremy too, one. right? Uh, I think uh, it's j- either that or the ones. Okay, yeah, yeah. it would be yeah. that or the ones. I, w- I would, I want to. Should we call him and find out? Uh, he might be on daddy duty, bro. He ain't on dead. Yo, he ain't doing nothing. I already know for a fact he's not doing nothing. Hold on, let's see. Air Jordan six. If it's one for you, what do I have left? One, two, three. All right. So for me, it's four. Okay. Yeah. I love I love the Jordan 6, bro. I think Oh, he's probably at work. Mm-hmm. I think the Jordan 6 is such a like a step up from the Jordan 5 mm-hmm. in terms of the silhouette, overall silhouette. It really it really follow, follows that model. Mm-hmm. Um it it does become slightly sleeker while also becoming bulkier in a way. Yeah. Um but yeah, dude, I really, really like the Jordan Six. Oh, he can't. He called. All right, hold on. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah. Jeremy. So, so Jeremy, we are on. We are doing our podcast right now. Wait, you? How you? He's like, how you? You know, you know. Don't say anything. Don't say anything bad that you don't want. Out <laughs> these streets. Um, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I got a, li- <laughs> got a limited. Um, there it is. Uh, so we were at, we were talking about our favorite, uh, our favorite shoe. And so I have six at number one. My six, sixes are my favorite uh, Jordan shoe of all time. What is your favorite? We were trying to figure out if it was the six or the my one. Favorite, like overall. Yeah. Like, like there's different ways of looking at it. To me, it's more of like, like 
style or just like cat. I don't know. Just like, overall, what's your favorite? What's your favorite Jordan? Hold on, let me think. Oh, oh, whoa. Should have should have texted him beforehand. Yeah, probably should have. Like, so honestly, like if I don't know, man, it varies because yes, like this whole this whole last two weeks, I just been wearing fours. Then, you gave then another week. I just want to wear like some um, some ones. I don't know. It varies, but you gave I'm him like, options, bro. Ask right. him. Ask him only between the one and the six. Right now, Be- because you know between you know, the okay between the one and the six. What's your favorite shoe? And honestly, you can't really wear the six. And for some reason, you can't wear the six. But whenever you put on a one. Like you really feel no oh my what, god! You know, as the six hey, y'all hearing it here? Y'all hearing it here first? Hearing it here first, you guys. Sadly. Okay. It, so the one. Yeah. Because okay, okay. That's uh, com- I don't feel confident with that one, but yeah, I'll go with the damn, one. Damn, he, he had no conviction behind the one. All right, dude. Okay, thank you, Jeremy. Thank you for uh Man, for. <laughs> All right, thanks for wasting my data. Appreciate yeah, see. it. Nah, <laughs> get this guy out of here. <laughs> Send him a T-Mobile credit after this. Yeah, T-Mobile credit. <laughs> buy buy him some minutes from Seven Eleven. Yeah, straight um, up. Okay, so okay, so one, so he's he's out of here. For mm-hmm. me, the Jordan Six is number one. Mm-hmm. Uh, we talked about this in the part one. Uh, the DB Six are my holy grail. Um, so it is what it is. But Do you um, own those? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 They're in storage. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. I I got I got lucky on eBay for them, but I also I just didn't care. Like I saw them and I and I really was I was kind of like feeling myself. It was like twelve thirty. You don't make great purchases after twelve o'clock. Maybe. No, last night I didn't make a great purchase, so I feel you. Yeah, it's like you never. You don't like, even want to know what I. Yeah. Uh-huh. When, you, when you have a bund, when you like, when you have that uh, that ability to just say, you know, fuck it, I'm just gonna buy whatever, like, and then you see your grail, and it's like at a price that you can com- you could talk yourself into. Be like, I can, I can, I can, oh, I just, can flex this. All I gotta maybe. do, you know, hundred fifty from this paycheck, yeah. hundred fifty from yeah, that exactly. paycheck. Bam, we're even. Yeah, so I, I did it. I pulled the trigger, and um, honestly, it's the best uh, decision I made. Um, mm-hmm. The, the shoe itself was in great condition. It was used, but it was, it was like, uh, it was like slight yellowing up at the, on the sole. But that was pretty much in like the, the translucent uh, spots of the sole. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the most part, it was clean like it was a great shoe so I, you know i was happy for it robocop i might want to i might want to get the retro but i know that the price for it already are you know stupid but you know how it is yeah i'm uh my 2k player has them on though i have my two my 2k player it's good enough them, you know simple it's good enough. which i want to talk about i want to talk about 2k because they've been dro- i don't know if you know they've been dropping shoes based off of the my player nation so like the uh the, Le- the lebron uh the the Sunday white, I think that's what they call it. The Sunday white LeBrons that uh, they dropped them on 2K. So if you won a My Player Nation game, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you would get the code and it would to, uh, to, to buy them. And they did the same thing with the KDs, uh, like two weeks later. So I like, I like, I like, I want to talk about that because 2K has been, even though 2K is a right. trash game, they've been actually, I like the sorry, bro. The this, this year I went FIFA only. I still need to get FIFA. I'm uh, been murdering lately, so that's cool. That was for a good price. It's like twenty. Well, actually, I lost last night four zero. Man, I got smacked. Hey, yo, yeah. when are you streaming that on yo, our on Lace Twitch account? Yo, we I'll stream tonight, dude. I will, we, dude, we're playing for. We either play five dollar goals or ten dollar games. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, it's hot fire now, Wait. bro. Can you, can you, can you openly gamble on Twitch? Does it matter? I mean. It's no audio recorded. It's just my audio, and yeah. Well, oh, you, oh, you got to get everybody's audio. You got to put the headphones. Yeah, on. yeah. Well, we all have headphones on, but I don't know if they know how to do to do the thing. You know. No, your audio just, will be picked up. No, I. But when you stream, it doesn't pick up all the audio from everyone that's in your group, in your party. It tells them that you're streaming, but your audio is not included. Oh, on PlayStation, it does. Like it just, yo, know, everybody shits up in there. Mm. <laughs> everybody, everything, everybody says. So they first amendment, first amendment rules over here, bro. Come on now. Nah, nah. My friends, my friends love being recorded without their without their knowledge. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's happening right now. Government's listening. Yeah, I already know. 
my friend uh my friend today looking to the camera bro <laughs> my friend my friend literally was today was like yo so i um she was telling me about like all the cosplay stuff that she like uh the cosplay she wants to do for yeah. uh, different conventions and she yeah. was like i keep writing them down in my notes and she was like i wrote one down like two weeks ago and she opens her notes and it literally jumps to the uh to the uh cosplay note that she had with all the people so i was like your phone be listening hey bro be like so, that they know yeah, dude, I I have one note that's constantly pops up on my on my it's a Siri suggested and I'm like, dude, what the fuck? Like why does this note know that I need to do this, you know? Everybody that talks about shoes, I hope our podcast is being suggested to you every single day. Yeah, cuz cuz it it is unlaced. Unlaced. Cuz it it's the one. You know. Dude, you but Jordan 6, favorite Jordan colorway. Six, uh favorite colorway DB DB6. Uh, I would say second because we've already done that. Probably uh, the oh, good one, good one, good one. Uh, I own my two favorites. Do yours because I, I have to actually honestly think my, that's my second. So I think number one is the uh, infrareds. It has to be those. Like, oh, well, for me at least, it, okay. it's just so classic. Yeah. Um. And the number two is Carmine. Oh, how did okay? Today's been a long day. Uh, how did I forget about Carmine sixes? Because easy they're... top top second, second, mm-hmm. and it's not going to ever be DB for me. But it's definitely if it was in this, if we took out, um, like if we just did original colorways, Carmine six is the next greatest shoe to me it's a hot fire shoe you you see me every you see me every time i react when you wear your car mine so you already know yeah that's fire okay that's, that's a hot where, fire shoe where do you rank uh sixes i think on my list i have them i have them four four okay oh that's, that's not bad top five no. all, right. Mm-hmm. all right um yeah sixes uh to me are my favorite shoe i think just i, I don't I don't know. I think it's because like I don't lace my shoes a I lot. Like, like, yeah. And so I think the like the way it looks with the like like the it untied, doesn't it doesn't it doesn't uh loosen or, up or as uh, much laced. As, <laughs> yeah, I see what you did there. <laughs> but yeah, I wear a, a lot of my shoes untied, and that shoe doesn't loosen up like other shoes do. Yeah. If that makes sense. No, it makes perfect sense. Because um, I, I get exactly what you're talking about, yeah. Because uh, I do that with my 12s. And my 12s, if maybe after a while, they're like one of the laces comes yeah, out. Yeah, like if you rock, I rock ones untied. But sometimes, you'll, you know, the laces get shorter and shorter. And then it yep. ends up like this. Yeah. Um, the, the sixes stay in place for the yeah. most part. And usually, like, wherever you keep it, uh, it's, uh, I, I, I like, I just, something about Do you wear this, your lace locks? Yeah, I don't. I don't wear my lace locks with either my sixes or my fours. I mean fives. I put them. I put them at the bottom. I started doing that too with this yeah. most recent one that I have. Yeah. Um, but I don't wear them. The um, fives, I, I, I don't remember if I, because on my metallics, I don't. I don't. No, 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 no. Yeah, no. On my fives, I take them off. I always take off the lace locks. But on my sixes, I always put them at the bottom. Okay. Which is like one of those things where it's like I always like dread because i hate having to like relace shoes for some mm-hmm. reason like mm-hmm. especially like shoes that have come with like multiple laces i'm like Ugh, like all right i always have to relace my shoes like i do that with my grinches like there's sometimes i want to keep the green green laces in or i want to do red i'm so. over under factory shoes usually come uh under. uh over uh, over under but i'm under over okay um, um yeah, I'm over. I just started doing over under like, a yeah, right. Is it under over? Years ago, yeah. it's oh, it's it's over. Yeah, uh, that I just is under over, right? That's under. Yeah, under over. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I just started. I just started doing that with a lot of my shoes, and it's probably the best decision I made in my life. Um, yeah, be under under made. over under over allows you to um loosen up and and re-grip your 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 foot i guess yeah so uh, I, I like that i like that uh oh do you oh, uh shit i'm over here i'm looking at my front doors over there and in amazon my orders have been delivered hey there's three of them <laughs> hey dude i went in bro i bought 
What did I buy? I think I bought 40 things off of Amazon, dude. Okay. So I let's went have in. A, let's have a quick conversation. How much money are you making from this podcast? You're, <laughs> you're not making, like, I, I know. I went back and renegotiated when you left. Yeah. How much um, are you making? Uh, I'm making an undisclosed amount, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm not allowed. Uh, my lawyer said that, you know, throwing out monetary values can really hurt my overall branding. Mm-hmm. Um, that painting looks real expensive behind you. Just hey, like bro. You know. Just hey, man. You know. it's, it's a family heirloom, bro. Mm-hmm. It's been around since the 1840s. Okay. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Generational wealth. Yeah, hey, bro. Come on. Talk about it. I like that. Sometimes you just get born into it, right? I like that. You so know? Gabe has three packages from Amazon. This I, is straight up whale skin that's painted on raw. <laughs> straight up <laughs> whale whale canvas, bro. Whale canvas. <laughs> that's what it is. And it's so delicate because the whale is still alive. Exactly, bro. We we don't with, we don't hurt with, animals. So with fresh to... fresh fruit pigments used up here, bro. Fresh mm-hmm. fruit pigments. Mm-hmm. If somebody said that to me, I would instantly assume that like it would take me three lifetimes to be a to be a <laughs> baby, like well skinned and fresh fruit pigments. Yeah, like I'm, I I know I can't afford it. Mm-hmm. And look at this, bro. Look at this raw edging, bro. It's straight. The <laughs> the the artist finished it, and that was it. Finito, he dog. Gave it, he just mm-hmm. gave it to you guys. That's, he signed it over here too. Signed over here. That's yep. that's 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 family connection right there. They Straight up, bro. popped up on him while he was painting. He was like, "You mm-hmm. know what? Take it. It's that. Yeah, take it. It's cool." That painting came from like a whole other country, fam. That's true. That's this country was a, another country when that painting was made. Like, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, sixes, sixes, yeah. sixes. Um. What was we saying about six? Carmine we do, we, Sixers. We just ranked them actually. We just so ranked them. We're, um, that's for, really Sixers' much. first championship. Um, can't forget about that. His first yeah. one. Uh, he was wearing infrared sixes. Um, I think what I really really like. They were in the uh, they were in the commercial in uh, the Mars Black and commercial with uh, with uh, uh, damn it. I, uh, I, Lil Richard, I'm sorry. Garlis. I really like the uh, the uh, what do you call it? The underlining, the underlay of the 3M that's mm-hmm. under uh, in between or underneath the little bubbles, the little yeah. dots or whatever. I really, really like that. And if I remember correctly, the Air Jordan Six is one of my favorite retro cards. Let me look it up right now. Yeah. They they came with the uh the which retro card is that? Let's see. Let me see. Okay, so images. Yeah, yeah, it's this one. It's a he's like he's like characterized, cartoonerized, cartoonerized? I don't remember. I don't mm-hmm. even know. Cartoonish. And he's jumping towards you. Um, here, like, I'll take a photo and I'll just feed it back into the camera. So far. Is there? Yeah. The Air Jordan 6 retro card? Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen that one. I've seen the I've seen uh, other ones. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen that one. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, you, you didn't have it like that. So do I. I, well, I didn't. Sorry, bro. I wasn't living that life. Mm-hmm. Still ain't living that life. Mm-hmm. P.O. Box life. What's, what did Drake say in that interview? Uh, can you make me another wine, please? <laughs> uh, I, thank you very much. Yeah, can you go freshly step on the grapes real quick? <laughs> <laughs> go, go on to the winery. Yeah, real one time. Uh, sorry. I didn't want to have to get up to get this. Oh, fr- shameless plug. So um, I think that leaves us with one shoe, right? Yeah, the final one, the final one, the final chapter to Jordan and the Bulls um, to the, the uh, second three P. The last, the la- the the last hurrah for the Bulls, uh, greatness that dynasty. Um, 
this. Like you said, the ending to the second three P. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Nobody thought we could do it. And they nobody did had it. No, nobody had no faith in us. Jerry Krause didn't care about us. Jerry Krause. Um, um but the last shot, Jordan four teams. Mm-hmm. Uh, was it a push off? Um, I think. I don't. I don't think so. I see the connection, mm-hmm. um, and it does seem that way. Um, but I do think that there's also like other forces behind it, like momentum, like scientific explanations. You know. Uh, so he clearly. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind he was going that direction. Mm-hmm. You know, Jordan needed to just hit the hit the one step and come back. You know, it would have worked. Um, it doesn't look so much like a push off because it doesn't look like much force was exerted into that movement of of, of pushing him that way. I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but Kobe did say you didn't. He didn't know how strong Jordan was until he stepped on that uh, that All Star uh, court with him. It was like, yo, hey, my guy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, if man, if the ref didn't call it, I'm not gonna call it there. I said it there. It is. Uh, hey, I'm, just, I'm see. I, I just want your opinion. I don't think hey. it's a push off. Uh, it looks like just like the, what that kid did to me, that 19 year old kid did to me. Uh, when I went to San Marino High School. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, what? Put six eight, skates? eight months ago. It looks it looks exactly the same. He did mm-hmm. one move, and I was I was already sitting on the bench. <laughs> you know. So. Hey man. Uh, I don't think it was a push off. But anyways. Uh, the four teams, uh, the last shot, yeah. probably one of the most memorable uh, photos in Jordan's career. Uh, definitely, it's crazy for it to end that way too. It's, yeah. it's a dope, dope, dope way to go out. It's, it's before Peyton Manning, Peyton Manning esque. Uh, even though I hate Peyton Manning because he is the reason why my Panthers still don't have a ring, or Cam Newton for that matter. Cause I don't have him either. <laughs> you ain't have to remind me of that. <laughs> He's still working out, jobless. Anyways, um, but yeah, like it's 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 kind of how you want to go out. Even though we know the history after the last shot that he does come back, he, but he came back. But uh, pray for the Wizards. But for the the like the Bulls dynasty, the Bulls like what they built and what mm-hmm. like Jordan's you know presence was. That's the perfect way to go out to to literally rise up and to the occasion, the last moment, rise to the occasion, hit it, yeah. and that be the story that everybody tells is you have six championships. You know, you 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 did it six or six. Two dynasties. You did it twice. <laughs> like, you know, and then you go out with the people that, you know, you go out with Scotty, you go out with all these, uh, you go out with Phil, you go out with these people that are there. Yeah. You know, you know uh, who would have thought, who thought that that could even happen? And it did. Two um, different teams, essentially, when you really think about uh, it. Sure. And when you really think about, like, uh, the dynamic of, what they accomplished mm-hmm. with the the pieces that were there the first time and the pieces that were there the second time. Mm-hmm. It's crazy being, how like being totally yeah, being totally different. Like they but they they're the same players at the end of the day. It's it's a trip. Like Steve Kerr is is Paxton, bro, straight up. Mm-hmm. Like they, that's who they were. And obviously Dennis Rodman was there to fill in the gap that Horace yeah. left. But like it really, they really were able to f- just find other players that matched that energy and brought those same skill sets and plugged it in, and bam, another yeah. three P. Yeah. Um. So, looking at the four teams, uh, the your thoughts? The little... You got you got eczema. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that video is funny as hell. <laughs> <laughs> that's a blooper count right there yeah. for sure oh, oh man. my god um no but yeah <laughs> yeah um 14s thoughts 14s um i don't really like the 14s no um 
I think the low top four teams are even uglier. <laughs> they look they look like little loaves of bread that you just put your feet in. <laughs> um, it's just a weird shoe how like the collar on the on the medial side, the inside comes up higher than on yeah. the outside. So it's just a. Eh, um, I do like the colorways that don't have the the dots in them. For example, the bread 14s have the perforated dots off to yeah. the side, but the but the black toes they don't have that. Mm-hmm. Or the new uh red joints that are coming out in like two months, they don't have the perforations either. Mm. Um so if if they don't have perforations, I, I like it more, better I guess. Mm. But overall it's it's dead last on my list. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um the fourteens, I actually I like. Um, I have a couple. Um, they're like those Supreme fourteens, bro. Really, really Supreme. That's where you're gonna give they're, us. <laughs> they're they're beat to shit. Um, uh, funny story is, I do have a pair of fourteens that Wally signed, which I was uh, really happy about. Shout out to Manny. Shout out to Isaac. Shout out to. Uh, uh, Ooh. I didn't even know you had a pair of 14 that are signed by Wale. Yeah. They're, uh, oh, shit. They're, uh, I'll, I'll get up and show them in a second. I, I just lost energy. But um, I went to the Wale Ambition Tour. And uh, as everybody knows, like most of Wale's shows in with him signing uh, shoes or pretty much anything that people would throw up to him. But he usually people have their shoes signed and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so I spent this the the signature itself is lazy as hell so mm-hmm. i will put that out there it's, it's the laziest so you're not going to get certified by a Fuck by no. um hell no that the they um i just had got them and so I, there were uh I, what 14s were they uh i forgot the nickname for them the uh the dark gray with the with the, the blue yeah Ah uh, man you look like that 14 is equivalent to Mike wearing those 12s, bro. <laughs> okay? Okay. <laughs> those 14s are... <laughs> Jeez. I, I liked them. I like the color. No, nah, like, man. I, 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 I'm, 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 a big, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for gray. I'm that's, getting ahead of this, right? Because that, that 12 comment really caught me slipping. Okay. So I got to meet it somewhere so you guys can understand where I was coming from. <laughs> All right? The, the He... I... um. So I'm I'm trying to get him to I'm trying to get a sign, but like so we start off at the front. That yeah. was the thing. We start off at the front, and then uh, a couple of these girls who were fucking probably to our neck, maybe mm-hmm. maybe shorter, were mm-hmm. right behind us. And so we, uh, Isaac and Manny are six feet six one, so they they're just towering over these girls. And so we decide, you know, you guys can get in front of us because they're getting, you know, swallowed by the crowd anyway. So yeah. like, if you guys get in front of us, you guys can hold on to the railing, all that stuff. Y'all be good. Um, so shout them out first off because they were they were really cool. Um, but then it comes to the end of the show and like Wale goes and everybody starts signing shoes. And he starts signing shoes and stuff like that. And people are throwing up some wild shoes. Like I was, mm-hmm. I felt like embarrassed based off because some some people were throwing up some some bread fours and. I could have swore I saw uh uh so I think it was some uh lightning uh lightning fours up there but cuz he always gets somebody that brings some like priceless shit to the mm-hmm. to the show to sign. Mm-hmm. And I had just got these fours and I wanted to wear them with my jersey. So it was like I'm I'm, I'm just going to wear them regardless. And I think it was also I didn't want like if I would have I would have been upset if I wore something that was like really nice. Yeah. And they would have got stepped on because the shoes got stepped on like crazy. Like, yeah. So I didn't want to wear something like really nice and they get stepped on and then they also don't get signed. Like that, that's just a waste of a night for that shoe. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I'm just going to take the 14s. Um, and shout out to the girls because I'm trying. Like I'm reaching and I don't know what it's like to be an artist on stage and have, you know, thousands of people, you know, trying to throw shoes at you. But he keeps passing by and I'm close enough to where he could see it. And I'm either, yo, know, either he had a beef with me and he didn't want to say nothing or he didn't see it, but I feel like it was a beef. But either way, they, uh, beef, bro. <laughs> they, uh, they see the, he's, they take the shoe out of my hand. Like they literally snatch out of my hand and just rush them. Like they're small little asses to the like very front 
and like mm-hmm. put it damn near on his arm. Mm-hmm. And I wish I kept the video because I've changed like phones like 17 times since then. But the put it on our arm, he signs it. And ever since then, like we've me and us and those girls have always been friends. And I always tell him, like, you know, you guys, I owe you guys everything because everybody knows Wale is, you know, my favorite artist. And for him to, to get a chance to sign it, it was, you know, great. But um, yeah, so like that's my that's my fun story about the 14s. I yeah. like, uh, probably the best moment. I wish, I honestly, looking back at it, I wish it was a different shoe. Um, I so think, do I. I think about, <laughs> I wanted, I was going to wear my French blue toes. Yeah. Because um, this is right when I had them. I didn't, I hadn't worn them yet. But looking back at it, I think I would have been upset if I found out that they were so separated, especially at a concert. Like it would have been. It probably would have happened there, to be it honest. Would, yeah, it would. I know it would have happened, but I, it probably would have been worse because people were stepping on my shoes like crazy. Yeah. Like, like we had the girls in front of us, and then people started kind of like, um, like as the you know, of course, you know how it is at a concert. Once the music starts going, people kind of just start shifting. It's like that, and so we end up instead of we were at the gate, and then we ended up like maybe two groups back behind them. So it kind of just got like weird. And it just, my shoes got stepped on like crazy, but um, actually I'll, I'll, I'll get them right now, but tell them your 14. Oh. I guess I don't really have a 14 story, to be honest. I never really liked the 14s. Um, I, I mean, I, it's not that I didn't like them. I just, there's nothing about them that I liked enough to want to own a pair. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I do. I do remember that. I do remember that in middle school, uh, one of the one of the chicks that you know I was crushing on, she was vibing on some black tail fourteens. <laughs> um, those and a pair of white air forces were like her. That was her rotation. Um, but uh, other than that, that was kind of like that's literally the only moment I really have with fourteen is I associated with that girl I used to like in middle school, and that's it. <laughs> Shout her out. Uh, so, shout out to Maryland one time. So these are the 14s. If yeah. you guys can tell, I wore these once. Yeah. So if you could tell by the condition how crowded that that because this is Ambition Tour, so this is like his probably his most his most popular album. So it was sold out crowd. This is House of Blues. Tour to shit. These shoes are if you see them in real person, like you like you can't tell based on video, but they're fucked up. Uh, you can see they're the diff. You can see yeah. where the dirt is all up on the uppers. It's just crazy, like. People spill drinks, all that stuff. Like, they're just fucked. Yeah. But I got Wale's signature. Like I said, I, I told you guys, most lazy signature in the moment. Yeah, yeah. Most laziest signature in the moment. I think it goes, I think the signature is that way. If you, uh, Yeah, I, I, I see I see a little Wale in there. Yeah, and so thank you, like, I, I again, thank you, Wale, for signing them. Um, hopefully one day we can have you on the show and you can, you can sign – you know, actual better. pair with and some, me and him are gonna have to beef. Yeah, oh yeah, the the <laughs> the, the, the blows are going to get thrown. He's yeah. gonna start talking talking uh lyricism and he's going but either way, uh yeah, so fortunately he'll, he'll, he'll be like, Is is you finished or is you done? And he'll walk away and walk he's, out on me. He's like he's yeah, as soon as you start saying that he's gonna probably just walk out. He's like, All mm-hmm. right, gotta be over, I'm good. All I'm, right, I'm done all right. with this. Yeah. Um, y'all ain't yeah. even paying me. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> y'all not even paying me for this. I'm doing this out the goodness of my heart. You come, yeah. you come at me and tell me how bad I've artists I am. Yeah, now I'm out of here. Nah, dude, I never use those words, dude. I don't think he's a bad artist at all. What I did you use. I don't know if I have words to use. I would just like to know what that thought process is, um because it happens with a lot of artists. But Wale is not the only artist I feel this way about when it comes to your mixtapes and your albums. And Mm -hmm. I know that when it comes to your albums, there's other forces, there's record labels, there's Mm -hmm. outside things that affect your decision-making. I get that. I just would like better insight. Cause I think- Watch the the pull-up with Joe Budden. Oh, with Joe, with Joe Budan? Yeah, he uh, he does a he does he did a interview with him a couple months ago, mm-hmm. and he lit like because you know Joe Budan, he's like kind of like he wants to know the ins and outs of a lot of yeah, stuff. and so he asked him straight up about it, and so without without him being like so forward and like so forthcoming with like a lot of information, he kind of dives in a little bit on like like what it's like when it comes to his albums and like why he has such a hard time staying with uh, with labels because of that creative 
like tug of war. I mean, war yeah, dude, he's kind of been everywhere. I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong, MMG Wale was one of my favorites. Yeah, MMG Wale, like yeah, was, just the, just the fact that he was there, it gave the entire label like this, like this just different approach to like, oh shit, we're a label and we got some names, you know, we built yeah. some hype and we can actually create something. Yeah. It didn't happen that way, but for that short time, I really felt that it was gonna happen. Yeah, he. I think I feel like that. Like I wish that that uh, I wish that that uh, that whole moment was done differently a little bit for them. Okay. Because I feel like at a certain point, Rick Ross kind of just started oh. signing people that didn't have that chemistry because, like, it was Rick he had, Ross. Who, who else was there? Uh, was so Gun, had, Gunplay was there, right? Gunplay, Omarion at one point. <laughs> um, what was the uh, uh, Wale Stolly, St- Staley, Oh yeah Stolly 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 was there He's not that bad He's not He's not And like he was He was also somebody That kind of like gave it But it was just The way that They didn't push him Like they were supposed to No not at all Like they put, They just kind of Left him in Ohio Like yeah <laughs> Let us know When the album was done <laughs> Really And then just Come with it And so Like Wale I think Wale and Meek Mill Kind of were that You know Perfect Those driving forces Like of that moment And I think if he Rick Ross probably took maybe like even two more months to kind of say, okay, who's really somebody I can sign to this to this label and like be to help us like grow. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that they probably would have been a lot more successful than they were, even though they were still a very successful. Uh, successful that was a good album. time though. It was yeah. a good time in music. Yeah, but anyways, uh, off, 14, of that, off of that, fourteen is fourteen 14, on my list. Fourteen is fourteen on your list. Dead last. Uh, fourteen is uh eleven on my list. Do you have room for that? Let me I check. That. Do I have it on eleven? What what what? Yeah, it would be. A, you have you have open three, four, five. You actually have six open. I thought I had. No, okay. actually, no, no. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It looks like you have 11 open. 11, 11 is, I think 11 would be great for 14 because. You have 11 um, and 12 actually that are open. Yeah, I know 12 is open. And that's for the last shoe that, of course, I think pretty much everybody knows now is not on, that we haven't talked about at all, which is the Jordan 2. Hey. So for 14, I have it at 14 and you have it at 12. Yeah. All or right. no, 11, 11. The two I'm going to have at 12. Okay. So then I guess we're into the twos. We're into the twos. What do I have open? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do some shake shake ups right now. That's why. <clears throat> yeah. But that we're gonna we're gonna have to Air Jordan too. So much I'm gonna leave like, that to you because I literally I know I'm gonna go off to, right now, I bro. That I don't care about. Too. Go ahead. So much like um, real life, and much like the documentary, the two is kind of an afterthought. Mm. Um, even with the uglier Jordans, like 14, 15, 16, yeah, uglier and subjective. But um, and even when you think about it, like if people watch the documentary and if people have up to this point have heard everything that we've said, mm-hmm. they would also kind of correlate that we forgot the two much like the documentary and maybe they did as well. Yeah. Um, but the two is a really, really comfortable shoe. Like it's super padded. Um, it's a high top shoe. Uh, it ha- it's, a, it's one of the more like quality shoes, even early on, they were made in Europe in Italy um they 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 were just really really fire shoes in my opinion um and drastically different from the one and drastically different from the three like they 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 have a standalone little yeah. design element that, that I just like the twos a lot bro and they're, they're in their own little pocket yeah <clears throat> I think they're one of the most kind of singular singled out Jordans definitely is the two and it's such an early model too as well yeah um the reason why the the two is 12 i mean uh it's 12 on my list and Mm -hmm. not last even though i said i don't like the twos is because i enjoy the i enjoy the colorways for the twos 
Okay. And even though I don't like them, I don't like the shoe the way it looks or anything like mm-hmm. that. I do like the colorways that are on them. I like the way the colorways look on them. Mm-hmm. But there is, like I say, the ones like I know there are ones that I like that I'm willing to buy and actually wear. With the twos, I like the colorways, but there's not a two that I'd be willing to buy. Like at I all. At all. Like there's not a single one that's dropped that I'm like I would, I would, I would get. Um, and that's just because I've just never seen the two as like being. Where am I gonna put the two on my list? <laughs> I don't see like the I don't see the the favorite. I don't I don't see what other people see in the two, and a lot of people like the two, which always surprises me. But you know. All right, so everything is gonna get bumped down one. Okay. From eight, nine, ten, everything's getting bumped down one because I'm gonna put the Air Jordan two at eight right after the sevens. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so how about this? How about this? So, because we, we've gone through the shoes yeah. right, at this moment. Um, run down your list, 1 through 14. Okay. Your so top 14. The Air Jordan 1. Yep. Or the, at number 1, I have the 5. Mm-hmm. At number 2, I have the 1. 3 for 3. At number 4, I have the 6s. At 5, I have the 11s. Uh... Six is the fours, seven is the sevens, eight would be the eights. I mean, eight would be the twos, sorry. Um, nine would be the eight, ten would be the nines, um, eleven would be the twelves. Uh, where is twelve? All right, I gotta back up, bro, because I, I have a missing gap. So I have to plug it back in. Mm. Um, but, yeah, this is confusing. Just a little bit. Damn, so do I really want to put those at 10? Okay, so uh, now I'm confused, man. I've confused myself. Okay. This, okay, how about we do this? How about we do this? Yeah, this I, is I not like a good thing to have on the air right yeah, now. Yeah, I feel bro. like we gotta we gotta that go was, back and come back. That was kind of that was okay. kind of so ridiculous. Gonna, okay, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I Let's thought edit it was that out. Be, yeah, I, no, we'll have to. Okay, <laughs> I so mean, we won't. Gonna, but yeah, this is what we're gonna do. So next podcast, mm-hmm. we're gonna go into our huddle, mm-hmm. do our one through fourteen, mm-hmm. straighten it all out, mm-hmm. and then drop our one. Actually, we could probably just do this on IG. Yeah, we can just drop it on IG, IG. dude. So that's what we're gonna do. On our on the IG page, we're going to drop our top one through fourteen from the list from the document, mm-hmm. and we're gonna put them all into our own list. You guys check it out on our um, on our IG page. Um, we'll put it on our personal pages as well. Um, Unlaced X uh, threads and Unlaced X podcast as well. So you guys can check it out, all that stuff. We'll we'll do all that for you guys. When we come back with another episode, we will have a straight list, and we will do that, run through that really quickly. Um, maybe our guests, whoever we have on there, we might ask to do as well, just kind of, you know, see see where see where people's lists stack up, um, and go from there. So we'll do that. Sound good? Sounds good, bro. Okay, let's do that now. What up? Let's, so we've gone through all the shoes, all the shoes from the documentary that we've uh, felt. Uh, so if you guys know, yes, there was multiple colorways. Yes, there was multiple different things with the shoes, but I wanted to focus on the silhouettes mostly of the shoe, not the colorways. Yes, we talked about our favorite colorways because that is how we remember uh, remember shoes. Uh, yeah. And that's how some of the memories got caught for us. So that's how we are able. We can't talk about Jordan playing in them because we weren't, you know, we were too young. So that's why we're not doing, oh, when Jordan was wearing the Red 12s, I was, that was such a great moment. I was sitting on the couch with my dad and all that. No, I, I was, yeah, I probably was sitting on the couch with my dad watching the game, but I don't remember a damn thing from the game. So, yeah. you know, whatever. But with all the shoes being done, talking with all that stuff. Mm-hmm your takeaways and favorite moment from the last dance, the documentary, because we've sat, we got to see, we literally got a 10 hour, 10 episode. Um, 
my like, take was breakdown of Jordan's career with the Bulls and like just him and like his how people felt about him and how people saw him. My my what takeaway is one? it's pretty. It kind of hit me um uh, uh, like a a uh, an accomplished feeling, I should say, when it was over. I feel like it really encompassed just um really learning what that was like for that era. Mm-hmm. I'm really like I mean, we 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 got to see Kobe and we got to see LeBron, so we know what those players were. Yeah and are and the impact and we felt all those things we went through that Mm -hmm. with jordan we just know we didn't live it and i think the documentary really uh at least for me taught me like damn that this guy was literally an animal like art like he really is the greatest player of all time like that mentality it was a mindset it was up here more so than the skills in his hands yeah like it was it was always just trying to be and accomplishing that short-term long-term goal that he gave himself and not really caring about what others thought about him uh getting to that point yeah you you hear it in the 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 quote that uh that uh, roy williams uh said he was at the time he was the assistant coach at unc yeah he was talking about like when jordan uh came in they were practicing and Jordan was having like a rough uh practice like that because it's like you know it's college now so it's not Mm -hmm. high school and him uh, I can't remember for word for word but it was it was in the first episode he you know tells him um he uh he's gonna he's gonna he had a rough game and he was gonna tell him he's gonna be the greatest yeah he was gonna be I mean he 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 really spoke that shit into existence like his one of his rookie uh, interview said he he wants to put Chicago in the conversation of Boston and LA. Mm-hmm. And he did. And he did. Like yeah. he really, really did. Yeah. <laughs> he really did. And when you even look at like the grander scheme of that overall picture, like he just came in the middle of two eras and and did his thing. Like, yeah. it's, it's crazy. It's just really dope. That I think that's the um I think that's kind of the same thing I took away from the documentary because again I was I was a big Jordan fan but I never watched much of his like height of the prime of his career. Mm-hmm. Um, you only hear the stories and you only hear like what your family tells you and like yo when Jordan was playing like he was it was crazy. Who's that like, dude? You hear these moments and you can't really like fathom like what it felt like because you yeah. see like the, you see the clips of like the crowds and like you see the way people are like reacting with them. And the only thing I could think about is a Kobe Bryant, a LeBron James, even like, uh, like, even like, now, like if we take it even closer now, like the Steph Curry's of the world, like the way that they draw, like the crowds, you couldn't like. That's the closest thing I can get. And yeah, everybody that I say like, yo, like it was, it's like Kobe, it's like LeBron. They're like, it was different. Like it yeah, was different. And- there is there is at the end of the doc when they say um, that. I think about like how his, the magnitude of his of his stardom like mm-hmm. he was really he had international buzz you know he had people coming from all around the world and this is all in a time where the internet wasn't used to yeah. promote you didn't have social media you didn't have these outlets and he just literally chunks of other places would just put themselves here to see this guy mm-hmm. and um it just really shows you his impact. Really, it's is it probably won't ever really get touched in a way that he did. Yeah, I don't think like I don't think in his way like it would ever be touched because it's like you see, like even the even the um the part in the doc where they talk about um the tickets for the last season and how they went on sale at ten and then and they sold out for the thought, season. They sold out by that afternoon. Yeah, and it was like. Like and we hear it all the time now. Like that's you know common for us to hear. Like when when LeBron went to Miami, yeah, season six, like those tickets sold out immediately. Yeah, mm-hmm. but you see, you hear people talk about it because at that time that wasn't happening. And then they show like the Atlanta. Um, they they show the um Atlanta uh, Superdome or whatever it's Superdome, called. Yeah, or Georgia Dome or whatever it was. Yeah. And if you saw the setup, it was like it was a football field. It was like it was a football stadium, and then it's like. 
you have people sitting with like, binoculars, bro, and a radio. To, like you have like they are looking across a football field and the bleachers that are below them that are on the other side of that football field watching the game. Like the the camera view that they said that they showed for one of the seats, I was like, why would I even want to be here? Like in my head, I'm like, who would want to be here to watch that from that far? Like you can't like I wouldn't know who had the ball. The guy that they interviewed in the interview in the documentary had on binoculars. Yeah. And it's like, nah, like I'm good. And then the 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 funny line I which I thought was hilarious was like, um uh forgot who who asked him for the tickets and he was like uh he was like he was like, Where do you want him to sit? And he was like, Honestly, I don't care what they can sit in the locker room next to God. <laughs> <laughs> and so he just passed him the, the ticket. Yeah. And he's like and he's like, uh well tell him I tell him to thank me. Like, you know, yeah, he's yeah, like he's joking called, that he's yeah. God. But it was like, yeah, like that's that like people were literally wa- like watching a game from through binoculars and a radio to see him in his last season with the Bulls. And I was like, I like I would like me like now you probably wouldn't get that. But we can't say in hindsight now where we have you saw the tickets for Kobe's memorial at the Civic mm-hmm. Center yeah. where Kobe's not even there. Mm-hmm. And you're like seeing the amount like and of course you know Kobe was but that's a whole different situation bro like you're talking about you're talking about a game environment versus a morning situation it's not it's not I wouldn't they're not parallel bro that's completely different I look at them I look at them in the same way because I I come for I look at it in a sense of for me where they were showing those seats were I wouldn't have went like if I was like if I had the same mindset I have now I wouldn't have went I'd be like I'm good yeah. Why would I want to? Why would I want to sit that far from the game? But I can't see. Is the same way I have with the Kobe Memorial, where I was like, I wouldn't pay fifteen hundred dollars. Like understanding, yes, the magnitude of the situation, all that stuff. I still am not spending fifteen hundred dollars because it's not. It's not a game. Yeah, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't compare those two, bro. That I just. It's just. You're. I. I get the logic, and it does apply. Um. But you're literally talking about going to see one person in their last game versus going to go see just a morning situation where people are there not to see but to to feel, I guess. Yeah, well, not I, the I, same. I'm, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure uh, my reason comes off a lot harsher than it sounds, but it's like I'm just talking from my own mindset. Um, Sorry, um, getting stuff ready, but yeah, so, um, no, yeah, so what was your favorite, uh, I would say moment from the dark? Um, I really liked just the whole Rodman stuff. I really liked, um, I really liked to hear that Rodman knew his place and he was accepted by Phil and Scotty and Magic. Mm-hmm. In in terms of um, understanding that he was just a different type of person, and he needed what he needed to be comfortable in order to play at 110, mm-hmm. and they gave him that. Yeah. Um, I think if they didn't, obviously, we wouldn't be having this documentary. We wouldn't be having this conversation. Um, if they thought that they needed to control him in a different aspect. Yeah, I know they're out there doing the thing. Okay, i i would I would honestly say that's probably my my close second. Um, because it's all it all because when I see this documentary, it, like it puts it in a place because they have again, you know, not a promotion, but ESPN has the thirty for thirty for Rodman mm-hmm. uh, for this Rodman that dropped last year yeah so literally it's it's one of the most recent 30 for 30s that they dropped um but i love I, like, I do love that moment like them like it goes into like him and then it like phil talking about like his upbringing and how he was brought up and like how it was for him when he was playing for the knicks and then him coaching and so understanding like you know everybody is not as doesn't run on the same line basically. yeah and he understood that. And I think that's what makes Phil Jackson, you know, one of the greatest coaches ever because 
he understood that. And then like just the funny like aspect of like the Jordan talking about telling Phil like, yo, if you give him 48 hours or no, like he's not. Yeah, we're not going to come back. Yeah. He's not coming back. And the, the, the episode after that starting with Dennis has been gone for 24 hours and then the tick, the clock just starts going yeah. <laughs> and it's not, it's without him for <laughs> now he's been gone for like a week. And it's like, that's the, that's, and then, but at the same time, that team understanding like, yo, he, it's, it's, he just, that's how he's wired. Like I need to find a way to get up and feel like I want to put it out online because he put everything out on the line when he, when he played, mm-hmm. you have to find a drive. And if he doesn't have that drive, you're going to get a regular player that probably doesn't even make the impact that Dennis does in his whole career at mm-hmm. all. Like all the accolades that Dennis Rodman has or anything like that probably never happened if he wasn't able to be who he was. And I think the whole him being gone for doing his little, um, his time vacation thing for 48 hours thing. If you watch the Rodman uh, documentary, it literally, it's like, it makes that whole situation. If you saw it, like when, when I saw it, I was like, okay, it makes sense because he talked, he, he did the same thing in college. Yeah. Like not to that exact extent, but he was in and out. Like he didn't, like he did not know if he wanted to play, like he was good. But it's mm-hmm. just like shit happens. I'm, I'm yeah. I don't want to play anymore, kind of thing. And so you see that. And I think it. I think that was a great moment in that documentary. Like for honestly, like that's, um, that's uh, that's definitely something I, I, I like looking back on. Um, for me, there's so many great moments in that in that documentary. But I think for me, the greatest uh, part in that documentary is I I love the Scottie Pippen stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, just because I I'm a I'm a huge fan of Scottie Pippen, but I didn't know that much about Scottie Pippen as like his like what he had to go through his his career when it came to like him playing and like what he had to deal with when he was on the Bulls like finding out like finding out that you there's a dude that they're drafting or that they're trying to get from uh Tony Kukoc like that they're trying to that your own your uh your GM is trying to get while you're still underpaid for bringing him rings. It's like that. Mm-hmm. It, it just baffles me. Like it, it like it really baffles me that like Scottie Pippen, like, they, and then they name off his accolades of like, uh, like first and, and no, yeah, like, he was, like, on, he wasn't board, paid, like, bro. Straight and up. Just, thank you. I mean, that whatever. was, that was, that was like, that was, and he says that he wanted guaranteed money, mm-hmm. but, that's kind of his own doing, you know? Yeah. It's not like I, I believe me, bro, I was really upset at first. Um but to hear that, you know, he just wanted guaranteed money to, mm-hmm. to know that he would be able to take care of him and his, him and his. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you can't knock him for that, mm-hmm. but it sucks that the Bulls took advantage of it as yeah. as well. You know? Oh, definitely. And you hear you hear it in like when uh when Jordan talks about it and like talks about having to deal with that like playing without Scotty like Scotty just kind of being like yeah I'm like I'm good if I don't play like mm-hmm. and seeing and then have to deal with the Dennis Rodman stuff and like him you know being out or you know whatever he wants to do kind of thing and Jordan talking about like yo I had to shoulder this whole team at this point like this is like this all falls on me yeah because Scotty and it's, and he like he tries it like he like in a sense it's being selfish like if you really look at it, like it was being selfish in a moment under but you understood why he was being selfish no of course that team like looked out for everybody but him especially when he's first in you know half the stats on the team already and he's not he's you know, the he's the second player best player he was yeah, the second best player him, and you're not you're not paying him like you're paying him like he's a like he's a fucking uh like a bench player yeah and that stuff like for me like that always like that whole like throughout the whole entire thing just the relationship with him and Scottie Pippen just always like had my like I just perked up when I saw it because it was like Scotty was the one person that kind of like even though he everybody knows he was the Rodman to 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 Jordan he still uh he still there was so much that people didn't know about him I I didn't know about him and I didn't know like how much how screwed he was getting mm-hmm. by the Bulls, and mm-hmm. to see that, and then like hear that the 
the relationship between them and like how that even started and like the respect for each other at the same time like jordan understood but no res- but i'll tell you no respect for the organization no respect for organization at all yeah. and it, at the same time i i get it and you think about it now like if you put it into today's nba like he would get applauded for what for how he how he how he how he handled the bull situation today, oh yeah he would get applauded because Back then, it would be yo. It was you're selfish and you you're not like thinking for the team and it's like that. And they're gonna try to use that against you. Whereas now, teams don't have like people would be like yo, first in steals, first in rebounds, first in assist, first, like in and, and he and he's what? How what? He's a hundredth and what paid in the NBA? Yeah, nah. They wouldn't applaud him like yo, don't play, like sit out. Like why? Like this team. Yeah, but we not. Team. But we wouldn't even be in that position now, anyways. We wouldn't. It just wouldn't happen. Yeah, but I'm saying like just compared to like it's the I'm saying like I don't think that's ever happened. That's the thing. No organization has done that. Like that that will be the only moment in time that we have that happen. Like that's how foul it is. Yeah. And so that's what I'm saying. Like if you look at like because you look at I'm just saying like take the react like how the people reacted to the whole Scott like when they were talking about the Scotty situation. Yeah. But no, that the people weren't people weren't talking like that. People did tell him to sit out. People, it, it, it. They, what do you mean? No, no. I'm saying everyone was well aware that he was underpaid and that he no, shouldn't everybody, be playing. Everybody knew that. Everybody knew that. But people, like the players themselves, took it as like, yo, even though you're this is happening, you're letting your team down by not playing. I mean, now, but they wouldn't like that. Wouldn't even like players wouldn't cross their mind. Like you look at players now, like. They're openly like, "Yo, I'm not. I'm like, I'm. I'm underpaid." They'll let you know on their social media. But it's like a whole that, and that's and that's honestly to me that's kind of dumb. Like that's really dumb to me. Like it's just what? Who cares about what you are and aren't getting paid? That those are conversations that don't need to make it out to the public media. Like if you're getting underpaid, then don't play there. It's simple, bro. I don't. I don't like that we are we are in a in a new state of the game where players are making these open demands without um like how how is that not viewed as selfish just because I think, I think a lot of people like think of like they can win the 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 court of public opinion but it so, doesn't it doesn't matter though cuz but it, you, it doesn't matter. But you got to understand, we're the people that pay to see the games. And if, say, just say, LeBron, let's say LeBron is like, yo, I'm not happy with my contract or whatever it is. Understanding, yeah, LeBron is always going to get what he wants, but let's just say he's in that situation. Mm-hmm. If LeBron comes out, LeBron has a follow. Like, people are going to follow LeBron before they follow the Lakers or the Cavs or where the fuck he would be at, at that point. Because uh-huh. they're going to be like... They're, but it doesn't gonna solve any to- problems. You're complaining to people that have no authority over what can happen in your current situation. All you're doing is making a worse situation. If you really have a problem, then the problem should be between you and the person who can make the the situation better, which is the organization. But most people, but if we, we've seen this where organizations, they're willing to sit on and say, no, we have a hard stance on this. And then once they make a up for us like that, they don't want the heat that comes with that. Yeah, but especially especially if if, if I'm in like a position right. if I'm in a position where I'm with a team that's not paying me, I'm not gonna make an uprising to make that team to force them into a play. I'd rather just bounce. But that, I'm not you don't have that ability, like you don't have that real ability, especially if you're under contract. You know, I'd rather I'd rather request for a trade than a restructured contract. And you're more likely to get traded than to get the contract. I don't see it that way. I don't see teams doing that, especially if, like, if you look at it like a player is that valuable, like, to like if everybody knows that player is that valuable, and I'm pretty sure the team knows that, Mm -hmm. just looking at the numbers, and they're still not giving them money. I'm pretty sure if you say, "Yo, I want to trade," they're gonna be like, "No." (laughs) Have you seen the stats? (laughs) Why would you give to somebody else? Yeah, but I just I wouldn't openly request more money. I just wouldn't. That doesn't solve the problem for me. That doesn't to go out to a crowd of reporters or fans or whatever and say i'm not making the money that i should be working well 
that's how contracts work, bro. Like it's just how it is and, and that's business and you can't you can't let your selfishness for your self worth make you that ugly player that all of a sudden is fascinated by strictly finances. Like I get it, but things just don't move that way. You're not you don't it's just I'm I'm always for you know, if that's the way that you can get an answer out of whatever team or contract that you're in, do it. Because I, I, I think what what Cam Newton not. did, what Cam Newton did, is what I would do. He didn't go out and say he's getting underpaid to a to a to a to a extent where he's forcing an organization to something that they do or don't want to do. Well, technically, Cam Newton didn't have that. He didn't have the leverage for that because Cam Newton's coming off with two major injuries. Yeah, but so. Cam Newton is the best thing to happen in, in offensively in North Carolina since ever, bro, since Steve yeah. Smith, and he was a wide receiver. Yeah, but taking it from, like, a perspective, like, looking at the way that the that organization treated him, they looked at McCaffrey as, like, well, he's been putting the numbers up so we can get a – like, granted, they're wrong – Hundred percent, because everybody that's a fan of the Panthers knows Cam Newton is the one that makes that team go, and it's going to be like the way that the team goes is going to be very different this coming season, and people are going to see it. Yeah, but I know for a fact that Yo. team forced him huh. out. Either way, we're getting crazy off topic, and we're talking current, and we're dragging uh, a uh, a summary uh, podcast. Cause this would be good for other episodes, but we can't. We we gotta we gotta home back in here, bro. Mm. We gotta home back in. Um, overall, the documentary was cool, uh, and yeah, it was. I think a, a, a lot of people, being either Jordan fans, basketball fans, fans about shoes, whatever the case may be, that brought you into watching it. It mm. was a it was a good watch. Yeah, I think so as well. Um the I think I think this came out at the perfect time. Um just based off of where we're at in mm-hmm. the world. Like I think this was a great thing to kinda like give us It got us by for two weeks. Yeah. Two months, it, I mean. And it, it, it kinda boosts a lot of people's like inspiration. It's Actually like it was just of, one month. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. they, they showed two episodes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Month and a half. Yeah. So I think for a lot of people, this is this kind of came. This kind of came at the perfect time. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm glad I got to see, kind of like a uncut version of like people's feelings towards the Bulls, Jordan, and especially even the Bulls players. Like I love that in documentaries when or when players are like people that were in that situation, whether good or bad, mm-hmm. talk about the situation, mm-hmm. whether they were on the good side of it or the bad side of it talk about the situation and like are as candid as possible about like how they felt and like the things that happened. So I just, mm-hmm. that was, a, that, that's why this, this thing was great. Like it was just, it was great. Um, can't wait. For uh, more. I did briefly wanted to mention, um, I really like how the documentary kind of gave us like an insight on how mentally draining this whole run was for Jordan and, and yeah. why he retired like um i always thought it was weird to retire twice you know and mm-hmm. especially one right out of a championship yeah um but it really kind of just gives you those few seconds and that slight insight into why he made those decisions and um they're really spot on you know they yeah. like for you to drive out the best player in the league because you're mentally just in his face every day mm-hmm. with the same questions year after year. And you got to think about Jordan making it for so many straight years to the finals, you know, it was kind of like what LeBron just did, you know, in his last run, so many yeah. years in the finals. Um, he must have been physically tired, mentally drained, like just overall not having the energy for any aspect of basketball anymore. Yeah, and it's not this. It's not the same thing, but like, yeah, like you said, like Le, like you mentioned, like LeBron, and then also like Kevin Durant. Even though it's not the same, like 
yeah. in comparison, but like just taking his last stint with like the Warriors and like mm-hmm. constantly being asked the same exact question over and over and over again. And now that the media has like grown so much, like you have, whereas Jordy, yes, he was still a global icon. So the microphones were probably still twice as many as LeBron or KD will ever have in front of him. But you start to see, like you see his reaction to it and then you hear him talk about it. And so then it kind of puts in perspective, like, because LeBron or KD don't really talk about like their, how they feel about shit like that. Like they either will not say anything or just kind of let their game do it out. KD finds his other ways of doing it, but you see with Jordan, those burner accounts on yeah. Twitter, <laughs> but you see Jordan like, yo, that, that shit gets annoying. <laughs> like, yeah. I that mean, shit gets yeah. That annoying. Like, I don't like, especially, especially when you're like, do like, and it's not like you're falling off. Mm-hmm. You're killing it. Mm-hmm. It's like still people are still either doubting you don't want to continue or are, yo, you, sh- you sure this is the, the last time? Like, are you sure? Like, and then and then also having people over that are above you in the organization saying, "Yo, this is the last time we got to." <laughs> and it's yeah. like we we just we just did we just we just got you two we just got you got five rings because this right now yeah. and then go out and say, "Well, we got to do this one more time." And then either way, even if it is a ring, you guys, I I don't know what to tell you. Got to rebuild. It's no, like, yeah, that's crazy. Like that's crazy to me. That's that's insane. I would I couldn't imagine. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I as a GM, I don't like how how far up your ass does your head have to be, bro, mm-hmm. to really like sit there and look at the team that you have and look at the team that what they've accomplished with two different teams mm-hmm. with the same core, Jordan Pippen and and and, and Phil, Jordan Pippen Phil, Jordan Pippen Phil, and you want to break this up? Mm-hmm. It's like, but man. Yeah, another thing I learned is how much I hate Jerry Krause. <laughs> yeah, we, we, and we found out how much they all hated him, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, do, you think, do you think any other team crumbles? What do you mean? Situation? Like, say, like, any other, like, put, think of any of your, I mean, I, it, do you think any other team crumbles and doesn't get that, that third uh, championship? Like, think of your great, like, greatest team. I mean, it, it's, it's team. really like a, it's a toss up, bro. I mean, we can put them in that situation. Yeah. Any team can crumble. It's, well, I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying, this like, team almost crumbled. But I'm just saying, like, your opinion wise, like, do you think, like, because they got, they got to, they got to that point, and I, do you think there's any other team, like, all time teams, that you think that could have won? I, that could have won. I mean, that, you, that, I think the one you really gotta, the one you gotta look at is the one that's in between. The Houston Rockets almost made a dynasty when Jordan wasn't there, they won those two years. Mm -hmm. Like you, like I, that's one team you would, I would look at, um, right after, right before them, the next dynasty would have been Detroit and they were actually made it to the three years and they lost one. Mm -hmm. Um, I think they would have made it, uh, but they, it's different situation. I mean, they got there because they were pushed by their organization. They were like that. They were encouraged by them. Yeah, um, well, and that's why I asked the question because it's different when you have like like players saying like yo because we've had we've seen it so many times where players are like yo this is my last year with the team regardless like mm-hmm. regardless if we win or not, but to have the players like yo, I want to do this, but the organization is like it's really I, I <laughs> we're think, gone we're off of you I guys. think with them it's really it's a really it's different if we can't ask that question to other teams because. These teams, this core was really around almost ten years, basically. Like they were together for such a long time that what they accomplished, some teams won't even be around that long together in the first place. Could Shaq really, could, could either of Shaq and Kobe's championship teams? I think I think they could have. Um, I mean, but they kind of didn't. Also, that that last year of their dynasty, yeah. they were on the way out too. Yeah. Um, I mean, they got all these 40 year old legends trying to, you know, accomplish that. So, but I think they could have been, they did some situation in a sense there. Okay. I, I just wanted to, I just, I just wanted to pay, uh, place. It's, it's a situation. tough question, bro. It's yeah. a, honestly, it's a tough question. Yeah. Cause it, it, it all, it just like, like you said, like it really bounced me that like you can have a situation where you have these players and this coach and 
And the GM is like, no, I'm not having like, it. Regardless. And even the team owner wanted them to come back. Yeah. And I love the G- I love the owner like being in a documentary like and like openly talking about all this stuff because that that means a lot. Yeah, and he's really down the middle in a, in a lot of his decision yeah. making. Yeah. So. Um. Yeah. Yeah, bro. No, yeah, I, then, that's 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 all I wanted to ask. Um. Was good. Like, I'm actually other- backing up my tablet right now. Any uh any uh final thoughts? What the fuck is this? My bad. Um, not really. I think I think we t- we hit everything, bro. We really did, like really did. Okay. Um, I don't have any final thoughts. Uh, any updates you want to give them? Um, I mean, for right now, everything's in production. Uh, everything kind of got pushed back more than once, so we're just taking whatever we can right now and and just waiting it out. Really, there's nothing we can do. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, bro. Yeah, but it's 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 on the way, bro. It's it's closer now than ever before. So okay, just waiting it um, out. So yeah, you guys will get an update uh, as soon as we get an update. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this was fun. Uh, mm-hmm. just, just something we kind of just did on the fly. Mm-hmm. Little, like what almost a week ago we thought about this so like uh, over the weekend this past weekend yeah, yeah so uh, today's friday so we literally thought of this idea saturday, saturday? yeah saturday yeah so, yeah so we yeah. so we we did this in mm-hmm. uh in a full week so just imagine if we put our heads together and did this for a full year mm-hmm. <laughs> but um yeah oh, so, we already did <laughs> exactly uh so I want to thank you guys for uh, for watching and mm-hmm. joining us in this discussion. Um, it was, I thought it was fun. Um, mm-hmm. I thought the idea was really uh, was really cool. Just us being able to talk uh, about sneakers. sneakers and an era that we grew up in but didn't watch. <laughs> so um, with that, let me. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna talk with a shoe in my hand. Um, so with that. I think that's this is a perfect place to end this. Uh, this is part three. Uh, please, part Trizzy. I'm pretty sure. I hope you guys didn't get to this point and haven't watched part one or two. So please watch part one or two. Uh, they will we'll have them on a like a little playlist so that you guys mm-hmm. can watch all three and just kind of run through them. Uh, let us know uh, your favorite moments between the the nines, the sixes. The 14, 14s, 10s, 2s, 12s, and 12s. Yeah. So let us let us know what, what you think. Give us again, please. Now in this one, give us your complete one through fourteen list, um, from from one to fourteen, and let us know what you think. If you guys want us to do more of these, please let us know. Um, please subscribe, comment, like you know the the usual spiel, uh, and hopefully we'll have some more cool little specials for you but until then uh we will be back with our regular uh, podcast every every week now we got our new mics um looks like we're gonna be in the house for a little bit more so Mm -hmm. you guys will hear our voices i'm here for it bro i'm here for it so definitely uh check us out please leave a comment let us know what you guys think um thank you gabe for the idea and thank you for sending doing this I know what gotta, i do gotta send your uh, tablet away yeah so my tablet is actually being sent out today uh wow. it's overnight shipping so they should get it by like sunday tomorrow maybe hmm. um and yeah sometime next week i'll have a new one dope, dope. my glasses are in the mail so they just they just uh they got to the distribution center so now they're about to they're about to be here either tomorrow or sunday so I can, okay so i'll, I'll probably be able to see p.o box living you know they they drop it off and then I, they get uh, fired because they can't know the PO box either. They nobody can live with that. Information. That's it. Mm-hmm. You know, simple as that. Fuck uh, it. But yeah, so thank you guys for joining us. Uh, we will be back again, um, actually probably this week. So, but check us yeah. out. And uh, yeah, bye. Later, dudes. <laughs> <Peace>. <laughs>